knowing him, he could have cheated. Furious 9, look at them guns. I wonder if those are on safety this morning. Uh, because summer bodies are, yes, made in winter after all. So that's what we are going to be doing this morning. Then we're going to catch up with our gaming guru and tech geek resident best mate in all things technology, Grant Hines, who's going to share some of the secret tech behind the making of this movie, as awesome as it is. Is it real science? We shall find out. It's going to be an interesting show. It's going to be one for just the boys this morning. No, it's not just for the boys this morning, but it's going to be for the boykies this morning. Morning, guys. What's cooking? How's it, brother? Yes, boykies. Hey, oh. yeah. but. Hey, but. You right there, China? Hey, but. So awake this morning, hey, Graham. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, you beautiful people. Welcome to Wednesday. It's the middle of the week, but yet yeah. we are still smiling right through it, bringing you all the magic that we can. How are you doing this morning, Carl? I'm good, man. I mean, need some juice. Can I get juice with me? Yes, please. If you don't like mind. I'm going to you. While I'm gonna... you're at it, let's yes. get clean, of course. Okay, you know, we want to have just... a tidy, clean Because I want to get show. you some juice. No man. issues. Let me grab your hands there as well, brother, while okay. we tuck into this. Thank you. And right. while we're at it, of course, Mzanzi, we're talking about everything special, everything clean, and everything that protects you. And that leads us to our morning post. And we're talking to you about any nurse and frontline worker that you've been uh, in dealing with, that you've had an engagement with, yeah. or that's maybe just helped you along the way. We want to know your story and how they helped you. I've got a crazy one, Carl. Okay, talk to me. I had a nurse in Monaco right at the end of my scooter road trip of yes. celebrating world champs in France. Carl pulls out, knocks me, tear ligaments in my knee. I'm lying in the road in Monaco. I yeah. was just about to go celebrate and go check the boats. And luckily some nurse happened to be there, picks me up in the car, takes me to the hospital and sorted me out. I crashed my way out of France all the way back to South Africa. But that woman, honestly, she was amazing. Yeah, I could think she of the worst place to have a crash <laughs> yeah. like that. You're like, Monaco, it's like a holiday. Uh, well, um, it could have been a holiday, but it ended up being that. But, that is uh, beautiful. My work was there for me. Man. But I mean, that's the great thing with healthcare workers. I mean, you, you work so, so hard. And if there's one that's touched your life, we want to know how they've changed your life and more importantly, why. So get onto the Expresso Facebook page, give us your comments over there and we'll read them out a little bit later as we get into some news headlines. Lines. G is standing by. Thanks so much, gentlemen. Let's start here in South Africa, as we do with our national news first. Uh, people over 60 who have registered to receive the vaccine on the government system will soon receive a message to schedule their appointments. Minister of Health Dr. Zwilliam Kize yesterday said they were still on track to start the next phase of vaccinations by Monday. A list of approved vaccination sites will be published later this week. And Kize said special arrangements will be made for the elderly who were bedridden and would not be able to visit the vaccination sites for their COVID-19 jabs. Then Saudi-based ACWA Power has finally announced financial closure on the Redstone Concentrated Solar Power Plant after being awarded the contract in 2015. The project, which has secured 11.6 billion rand in funding, is the largest renewable energy investment in South Africa to date. Located near Postmasberg in the Northern Cape, Redstone is due to produce 100 megawatts and use molten salt technology to store that energy. Power from the plant is expected to be delivered at the end of 2023. On the international front, Kenyans are bemused by the news that a traditional alcoholic home brew, which is not sold commercially at home, is selling like hotcakes in the UK. The fermented brew's key ingredients include honey and a sausage-like fruit called moratina, which gives the drink its name. It's being marketed in the UK as a wine spiced with honey. And some Kenyans online have said they are happy to see that Muratina appreciated at last, while others are upset that the bottled Muratina will not be available in supermarkets at home, or at least not yet. Then uh, results announced yesterday after a once-a-decade census in China have revealed that the population grew at its slowest pace in decades, bringing the population now to 1.41 billion people. This adds pressure on Beijing to boost measures for couples to have more babies and avert a population decline. The census was conducted in the late 2020, where some 7 million census takers went door to door to collect information from Chinese households. Given the sheer number of people surveyed, it's considered the most comprehensive resource on China's population, which is important for future planning. Next, a world record bettered on Table Mountain. Former running rivals who became teammates, Christian Kreling and AJ Kalitz, both of whom we've met on the show, have beaten the Guinness World Record for the longest 
vertical distance on foot in just under 20 hours on Table Mountain's Platterclip Gorge. Grayling from Stenbosch and Kalitz from Melkbos, both trail running legends in South Africa, betted the record in a bid to raise awareness for Edu Nova, an NPO focused on the effective use of technology in disadvantaged schools throughout South Africa. In the process, they also broke a few Irish hearts as the previous record was held by a team on a mountain in Ireland with a distance of 18,086 metres. That's the equivalent to 13 ascents and descents. Now, Irish record holders had a full 24 hours to complete their laps, but Hreling and Calix had to set the record in less than 20 hours due to the time restrictions of SA's curfew. And the duo completed a distance of 19,398 metres. That's equivalent to 14 ascents and descents in a record-breaking time of 19 hours, 52 minutes and 10 seconds. And they started their world record attempt at 4 a.m. on Monday morning, finishing shortly before midnight. And we certainly tip our hats to both gentlemen. The record is where it belongs. Well, that's where we leave our news headlines. So that makes a good prelude into our sport. Insurance specifically designed for fearless women. Well, we start with PSL and an interesting result last night in our Premier Soccer League action continuing yesterday. Baraka FC recorded a 1-0 win over Amazulu FC at the Kings Wellatini Stadium. So despite their loss, Susuta remaining second on the PSL log behind leaders Mamarodu Sundowns, but it does dent their chances of chasing them down. And other results, Stenamosh FC, Orlando Pirates, they played out to a goalless draw at the Donny Craven Stadium. The Buccaneers missing the opportunity to go third on the log, staying in fourth place after yet another draw this season. It really has been the tail of the tape. Staying with footballing news, Pep Guardiola's Manchester City, they have been crowned English Premier League champions for the third time in four seasons. That was after Leicester City recorded a 2-1 win over Manchester United at Old Trafford last night. So City are now 10 points ahead of second place United, who have just three league games remaining, so an unassailable lead. This is their second trophy in a little over two weeks after they edged out Tottenham Hotspur 1-0 to claim that Carabao Cup and, of course, are still involved in the UEFA Champions League final. Then at the opposite end of the English Premier League table, Scott Parker's Fulham have been relegated from the league. That was after a 2-0 loss to Burnley on Monday night. The defeat left them in 18th spot with 27 points on the Premier League table. So Fulham dropping down to the English Football League Championship along with West Bromwich Albion and Sheffield United who were also relegated. Well, I'll we'll touch on those headlines in case you missed anything in just about an hour or so. Right now, let's set the tone for the day with some of your beautiful sunrise pictures. Thanks a lot, G, and thank you to all of our talented viewers that continue to share their beautiful sunrise vistas with us. It really starts our day off on the right note. And this morning, we start off with Angie Blackbeard from Khabecha, who shared this gorgeous glowing image of the orange and red sun rising over the ocean. Khabecha can expect the maximum of 20 degrees Celsius today with times of sun and clouds. And then Bavana Singh from Mossel Bay shared this beautiful image of the sun rising over the ocean. Mossel Bay can expect a pleasant day ahead with a maximum of 20 degrees Celsius. So please do continue to share your sunrise photos with us on the Expresso Facebook page. We really love seeing your part of the country. And don't forget to share your location with us so we can give you a brief forecast of your area. Now, while we enjoy experiencing a sunrise from your part of South Africa, we do have some international viewers uh, tuning in on both the YouTube and Africa channel uh, platforms in the US of A. And this morning, we report on the weather from Fort Worth, Texas. Now, the city of Fort Worth was established in 1849 as an army outpost on a bluff overlooking the Trinity River. Now, Fort Worth has historically been a center of the Texas Longhorn cattle trade and this region features very hot humid summers and with mild cool winters today. Fort Worth can expect a mostly cloudy day ahead. Some passing showers will be experienced in the a.m. with a maximum of 19 degrees Celsius. Now forecast for the day um, wrapped up over there. Now the level of the Nelson Mandela Bay's uh, main supply dams has dropped 0.1% this week to 12.44% of total combined capacity despite last week's good rains in the main catchment area in the Lungkloof area. So it has been brought to the attention of the metro. Another week uh, is uh, well expected until the critical 10% level is reached uh, where extraction from the dams becomes extremely difficult. Now it's estimated that parts of the metro will start running out of water by July unless the region has more rain. Now the Koha Dam is now at 4.25% and the second largest dam, the Mpofu, is just over 15%. Nelson Mandela Bay 
daily receives around 170 million litres of water from the Orange River, which is treated at Neutgedacht, which means taps won't run dry. But getting water to homes, businesses and industries will become more difficult. With a third of the month having passed, the 42 millimetres received thus far is well below the average of 58 millimetres, and that is for May. So, Polo Kwane, let's jump on to you for our first look at the temperatures. You can expect 26 as your maximum, and that rises, uh, well, that's a low of 8 in the morning. And then going into Bombela, 12 to 31 can be expected. Pretoria, 9 to 27 for you. Johannesburg, 9 to 24. Maya King, 7 to 26 can be expected. And then you've got Klerkstorp. Now, Klerkstorp, we're looking at your temperatures now. It is going to be 6 to 27. Moving along to some other temperatures after Klerkstorp, we go over to Kimberley, which is 8 to 26. Bloemfontein, 2 to 25 today. Richards Bay, 18 to 29. Peter Maritzburg, 11 is the low. And that rises to 30. Durban, 17 to 27, with a 40% chance of precipitation in your area. Um, Tata, good morning to you. 7 is the low, pretty chilly, but it rises to 28 later. East London, 12 to 22. Cradock, a low of 6, rising to 28. Haberga, 11 to 20, as mentioned earlier. George, 10 to 20. Cape Town, 10 to 19. Worcester can expect 8, rising steadily to 26 degrees Celsius. Sutherland, 7 to 22. And then Uppington, wrapping up with you, as always, 12 to 30 degrees Celsius. That's a wrap-up of the temperatures for now. I'll have another update for you a little later, and I can expect some of those amazing sunrise photos from you. You can send them over to the Expresso Facebook page. Ooh, now what is better than having something warm when the chilly weather comes through? Gee, I know exactly what you want. That's why I pepped it up for you already. Thank you. Smiling that? Ah, mm, yeah. You know, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if my nose doesn't um, do me a, a number here, I'm thinking this is Nicaragua. Oh, man, this guy's Okay, crazy. from uh, the La Complida region. No, I, I knew that. Oh, this, this is what we're making. This is too good, brother. Well absolute well nonsense. Done. We haven't even made the copy yet. <laughs> um, no, this is absolutely beautiful. So the La Complida has got a really interesting process behind the, the way that we make it. So we know that it's obviously um, an intensity five, but how they get the balance with this particular kind of um, blend, and it's got a, a real funky fruitiness to it. Um, they actually coat the beans in a year yeast, they let it ferment for 72 okay. hours, then they dry it out, which absolutely, yeah, you can see kind of breaking it down. Mm. I didn't know that that was called the mucilage. So I'm, a few, I'm assuming that the fermentation process is what kind of gives it that unique character and that unique profile that, that, that I'm exactly, getting right yeah, now. Yeah, man, that, that acidity, I love that. Um, mm. So roasting to acidity level three, um, flavor intensity level five, but in a, it's quite low on the scale, just a two, um, and it's got a good, as we said, a well balanced. Uh, balanced body and I think because of that distinctive sweet kind of fruity note the La Complida is extra special because of that fermentation process it makes it almost unique um, and I think you can taste it. You can certainly smell it, but you can definitely taste you can it. Definitely taste it indeed. Now, now, G, you were talking about this earlier. Now, this is what I've realized, which I think is incredible. The cherries that are harvested, mm. once picked, right? The coffee cherries are then coated with yeast, as you mentioned. And then it goes through that 72 hour process of just pure infusion of flavor. That's where that process comes through to get it dried out and this is the result, and I'm so, so grateful for it. <laughs> um, I love it, man. So aromatic profile, fruited and candied, something slightly different. You still get that beautiful intensity of the roast, but it's not, it's not too strong. This really is probably the most unusual of all of the Nespresso blends for me. And, uh, you know, literally coming from La Complida, a very small region in Nicaragua. And this is, I think, their proud export. It's beautiful, this man. This G is delicious. Well done. Oh, <laughs> Mm. Mm. It is With every cup, we cultivate some of the finest coffee in the world. Celebrating farmers as artists, elevating every coffee moment. Because with every cup, precious coffee preserves the beauty of our world. Nespresso. What else?
am loving this segment. We are continuing our build up to the upcoming 15th South African Film and Television Awards. And we're shining the spotlight on a short animated movie that has been nominated for Best Student Film. I cannot wait to see it. Now, this follows a rat who goes on a very revealing train ride, and it's called Flower in the Subway. It was created by a team at the animation school, led by production manager Christine Leclasio and technical director Kane Foster. And they are joining us via video call in just a moment to share that journey. But first, let's enjoy the film. It's cute, it's dangerous, it's romantic, it's beautiful, and the production is spectacular. Now joining us um, to delve a little deeper, two guests who I would imagine must feel so proud every time they look at this. Christine Kane, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and congratulations, guys, on the nomination, yes, but on creating a beautiful film. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it. Christine, the whole time I'm just thinking, how long did it take you to nail that wink, that absolutely beautiful? How does it feel to have all of the, the hours, the hard work being recognized in the way that you are? Oh my goodness. When the team and I heard that we had got the nomination, we were completely blown away. It was so unexpected. But I know that we are all very proud of the work that we put into it. And for us, it really just means that uh, we have now got a platform where people can hear our story, hear our thoughts. And that's all we ever wanted from this experience. And we're just happy that we can share it. 
And it, it really does tell a story. The narrative is beautiful. The short film, essentially about a rat who learns that, from my understanding and what I've taken away, that the valuable things in life aren't necessarily what you might think they are. How was the concept for the story itself developed? Because surely a good story is at the heart of any good production. So I think from the very beginning of our production, we always wanted the, the core of the story to be that what is the most important things in life are invisible to the eye and it's the connections that you make with those around you and the love that you show yourself and others because that is irreplaceable it's invaluable and throughout the story it was just very difficult to try find something that was so symbolic and that was so easily recognizable by everyone as we all experience life differently and i feel that the difficult decision our main character, Theo, had to go through is the battle between heart and mind. And I feel that once he made that choice, he knew it was the right one. And I feel life has all of these choices for us in life. And the most important thing to remember is just to be true to oneself. And of course, a rat was the best person to tell that tale. There's something really cool and cute about it. Kane, I'm going to ask you to step in here. What are the differences in rigging and animating a human 3D model versus an animal one, obviously in this case a rat one, and what were the learning curves of this production like for you guys? Yeah, so interestingly, the bone structure and general base structure of all mammals are kind of the same. So the rigging was Similar in a lot of the ways, you just kind of move the joints around. But I guess the biggest struggle in the rigging was the face, because they have these long snouts, and the spine. And like the most treacherous was the tail. Getting the tails right took most of my time. <laughs> um, but then also just finding that fine balance between human traits and animalistic. We don't want to make them too animal-like, but we also don't want to make them too human-like. Um, so it was that fine balance of having the animalistic um, animation mixed with the human emotion. Completely. And, and the way that you layered that in with the other rats and just being from all, on all fours to going on to, to two legs, there were so many subtle nuances to this that really drove that home. Uh, as I understand it, that you, you spent about a year working on this project just to get those amazing three and a half odd minutes of, of animation. Do you feel validated? Would you have liked to have done more, done something differently? How does it feel putting so much time and effort into a project like that and also to know that it's being recognized, your school and the animation with a, with a SAFTA? And I'll put this to both of you. Maybe, Christine, you want to start? It was such an absolutely amazing feeling. I know that the team and I worked long and hard on the film. Like, there were sleepless nights. There were energy drink and coffee-filled evenings. <laughs> but it was all lots of fun. Like, we enjoyed every second of it, and for it to be validated and know that it's worth it and that resonated with a lot of people and people enjoyed it, that was the most important thing for me, at least. And I feel the team really appreciates that recognition as well. So what's the next step from here? Now that you've got this platform, you've got the recognition, where would you like to take your, your animation might? What's next for you guys in your journey? Um, I definitely want to get hone in on more storytelling. Um, I'm currently working and, and that's amazing and honing in on the skills. But I think at the core, what, what animation is really about is about telling stories. And I think um, focusing on that and bringing more and more authentic South African stories out into the world is going to be um, the most amazing part about that in this career. Well, you've taken a very bold, brave step in that direction. Congratulations once again to both of you um, for the recognition. Yes, now go and win that SAFTA. But I think moreover, well done. And thank you for creating a beautiful little film that has a lot of heart. It really is something awesome to take in and makes me feel so proud to be part of the South African fraternity um, that is producing content like that. That's amazing. Well done to both of you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, congrats once again to Christine, Kane, and their amazing team again on their Best Student Film SAFTA nomination. Salute the excellence of up-and-coming talent like that, along with celebrated South African icons in the 15th edition of the SAFTAs. The award ceremony happens on Saturday, the 22nd of May, right here on S3. And you can follow all of the news using the hashtag SAFTAs. Welcome back. You're live with Expresso. Time now to connect with the parents out there. The journey to finding self-confidence. Where does it actually begin? In what is found for some of us, I think this is, is going to be a different journey for all parents. And parent coach Laura Markovitz now joins us to uh, uh, give us a little bit of advice on this topic. Look at the smile on my face, Sid. Laura's beautiful <laughs> face. So good to connect with you. It feels like an age. How are you, you it wonderful does. human being? Um, good. It's lovely to be here with you all. Well, cheer it. Yeah, we, we get it, man. We get it. <laughs> it would be so cool if you could actually be here. Um, we actually just had a... No, no, it would be wonderful. We, had, we just actually... Uh, Graham had this review of this animation, which was just absolutely wonderful. Magical, And yeah. there, was, there was so many notes in there with regard to, you know, just uh, some... Like, I mean, uh, this is a rat, of course, that that's <laughs> anything. But, but there was a lot of the sort of aspect in self-confidence, yes. And, and I think it's a nice segue into what we want to chat to you about. And this is why we bring you in, Laura. I wish you were here, as mentioned. But <laughs> we're going to have to take it for, for Zoom. But what do you mean when... Let's just say we talk about self-confidence in kids, because when you look at kids, they just look like they're bouncing around and confident all the time. But when you actually hone in on self-confidence, what is that meaning there for you? Yeah, so I mean, sometimes they're bouncing around and sometimes they're actually struggling. You see some kids, it's really hard, you know, going to do something at school or um, having to do hard things, things that aren't just playful or doing things that um, seemingly come easily to them. So when we're talking about self-confidence, we really are talking about kind of a, a trust, a faith in ourselves that we have an ability to do things. And often that concept gets kind of conflated with self-esteem. Um, and we think of self-esteem as more kind of a feeling of inner happiness, inner well-being, inner confidence, inner kind of self-worth and valuing who we are in the world. And obviously, um, if we have a good sense of self and self-esteem, we have a better sense of our confidence in our world and our ability to do things and our ability to have um, to trust that we have self-efficacy as well, that we can 
do things that change things in the world. So we're really wanting to build a healthy self-esteem so that kids can also feel confident in the world. So that's kind of what we're talking about, kind of trusting in our abilities to be able to do things. And, and as a parent, we kind of wish it was as easy as you just telling your child and then taking it on board. Yeah. But we know that there is no substitute for experience. So what, what can parents do practically to encourage the development of good self-confidence in our kids? Yeah, I mean, don't we always wish it's easy with all things with parenting? <laughs> but the thing is, obviously, you know, our kids come with their own stuff. You know, they've got their own personalities, their own temperaments. And I always say to parents, they come with who they are. Um, our role as parents is that we can do some things that can encourage the healthy development of things. And that's really what we, we're thinking about when we're talking about that, um, these sorts of things. So they're not everything. We've got to remember our child is who they are. But things that we can do as parents is very much start with role modeling. A sense of confidence and mm. um, you know when we are having to do hard things that doesn't mean we have to pretend away our worries or our anxieties about doing it we can um, acknowledge those talk about those sorts of things but actually role model kind of doing things with a bit of confidence so that our kids see that because they are always learning from us and then of course we want to make space for them to to make mistakes to fall, to, to learn that it's okay to make mistakes, to get up again, to keep moving. Um, and it's often, you know, that always sounds very easy on paper, but in reality, as parents, we kind of not wanting our kids to fall. We're not wanting them to make the mistakes. We're wanting to protect them. So really, as parents, stepping back a little bit and going, you know, I mean, not leaving them to climb the tree as little and saying, well, I'll step back and see what happens, um, but really being there to guide and support them so that they have the ability to try new things, to do things that are new and hard. Sometimes we need to break them into bite-sized chunks so that they're not too overwhelming or all-consuming. We, can, As parents, we can make them a little bit more bite-sized chunk so that they are able to do it. But we need to be there to support them, encourage them, and allow them to do hard things. And often that comes with... Um, parents who follow a parenting style which is an authoritative parenting style and an authoritative parenting style is being incredibly empath em em empathetic and also being able to hold healthy and consistent boundaries for kids so it's that that kind of combo of being there for our kids, acknowledging what's difficult, what they find hard, um, being able to acknowledge those feelings, but also helping them to do things that are hard and new so that they get that feeling of success. And we all know that feeling when we see kids, their feathers are ruffled when they have climbed to the top of the tree or they have studied for a, a test and have done okay. So we've got to allow them to get through those difficult parts so that they can have that feeling of success at the end of the day. That, that validation, and maybe, yeah, just to, you know, lift mm. the veil off, let them into your story Indeed. just a little bit. Or you can let them watch Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse where Peter Parker <laughs> says, no matter how many times I get knocked down, I always find a way to get back up again. And, I mean, that's such a great quote, yeah. and I think that's the, the power of some of these movies. There is actually a, a message that we can usher on. We've got so many more messages to share. Thank you very much. I mean, you sharpened our tools as parents, but there are going to be another couple of moments that you and I can chat and we can actually get some things out there. And I think we need to touch on how material things are often connected to self-confidence, which is, yeah. uh, can be negative. So stick around for that. Laura Markowitz, thanks so much for joining us. And we will catch you again in the next couple of moments. For now, Uncle Tubsy is doing something interesting. And now it's time for some advice in the kitchen. We have a classic in store for you to celebrate Africa Month. You want to see it? There is a classic mayonnaise that brings out the traditional French in three levels of tanginess. The mild classic, the medium classic, the strong classic. Tangy, the way you love it. Made with love by Clover. So here's a fact, right? If there's one thing that brings the African continent to life and brings us together, it's the vibrancy of our cultures. It's a fact. It's known anywhere in the world you go to, the languages, the food, the street food in particular. In Mzansi, if you're visiting, then you know there's no way you can leave South Africa without having the legendary 
Gotta and Chef Pumla, all the way from Ekebeja, shows us this morning how to bring to life a clover classic, Dagwood Gotta. Hamakota, makota, makota, hamakota, makota. Ah, ah, come on. Pumla, wow. You know what? You couldn't have grabbed my attention any more than you already have. I'm taking you home back to the streets. You are. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I grew up in Hammond's Kral. Don't forget about I the spent township. A lot of time in the streets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but well, this is fantastic. I love it. You are taking us home, but you're also bringing, yes. I think, the essence of South African street culture, food, in the most beautiful way, right? Yes. Tell me more about it. What are we making? So we are making a Dagwood cotter. Okay. So we're combining the Dagwood elements uh. with a cotter. Okay. So our essentials is everything that you see here. So I'm going to keep you busy. Okay. So here, I want you to dollop some of this clover classic mayo okay. into the bowl okay. with some sweet chili sauce. Okay, cool. You mix those uh -huh. and then spices. You see how I'm not wasting any time. There. Okay, so some mayo okay. going in there. So um, what am I making here, essentially? So you are making a clover classic mayo sauce. You oh, need okay. that to bind all these ingredients in your cotton. Because oh, it's nothing without it. Yes. It's nothing without it. Okay, cool. I'm so gonna some sweet chili going in, yeah? Making some egg here. Mm -hmm. Nice. Sweet chili going in there. And then you have got, uh, what is this uh, spice that's going in there now? What is this spice, my love? Kumla. So that is cayenne pepper. Or cayenne pepper. You can, go do, you can also use a masala if you want. Or really. if you wanted to do that. Okay, cool. Well, for our mayo uh, sauce, we're making use of the strong tanginess level. Yes, I love the tang. Yes, it, it's yeah. got that you can also make, tanginess, uh, right? You can also make, for example, um, sorry, mm. I just need to do the butter mm. here. Mm. So you can also use the medium. Yeah, that's okay. strength uh, level two. So that's good, because they've got level one, they've got level two, and then they've got level three. And that's a, yeah. that's a nice Any thing. It's available those. in all these levels of tanginess. Mild for one, medium for two, which is Pumla's favorite one. And it, three, I mean, that's for me. A strong guy's got to have a strong level of tanginess. That's what we're talking about. And Pumla today has joined me. She's opted for level three of tanginess for her chip sauce, which we're going to add in there, which is already smelling so good. Like, I can already taste the chips, and I haven't had the chips. So in there, we've mm -hmm. got... Um, classic the butter spread yeah um we're going to brown our kota because you want the char okay i've not seen a brown one you see now you're taking yeah, street food and the elevating it you're elevating it i love that so i'm gonna uh, brown this yeah then scoop the inside okay take it out uh -huh. so that i can stack my quarter okay great let's go let's go and that's the thing about the gota, right? Is that I always find uh, when, when, when people make their own gota or try to make their own gota at home, yeah. they sort of give it their own sort of twist, which makes it interesting. And some people make it like really fancy and add all sorts of hoodies to it yeah, and modern. Yeah. Some people keep it nice and classic and take it back to like the early 2000s. Some yeah. people just hoi whatever they can in the quickest and easiest way. Some people like the classic. Some people like yeah, the like classic. Yeah, like your Russian, you know, oh. like Russian gota yes. with your chips yes. and your sauce, of course. Yes. And then or you can polony. go, you can go the polony direction yeah. with eggs. Mm. I see yo, 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 you've got some uh, burger patties here as well. So you are doing a nice little twist there as well. The Dagwood twist. Love that. So okay. let's give it maybe a few seconds. So we've got cheese here. Mm -hmm. We've got chips. You're going to have to help because it's a lot of la okay. layers. Don't worry. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. If you want the recipe, we've made this super easy for you. Go onto our website, expressoshow.com. The list of ingredients is available on there as well as a step-by-step -step guide on how to bring this uh, legendary... Uh, classic gotcha. So tonight. with the scooping, Tabi, so, mm -hmm. um, sorry, not the scooping, but um, how you cut the cotta, yeah. it really depends on you what you want to do. Um, this depends is how, how much yeah, you've got that you can, you can also cut your loaf, for example, uh. lengthwise and then crossways. That's how I know it to be, yeah. Yes, so this is a different okay. one. Okay. So if you want to expose uh, the fillings. You can do that. Yeah, you just. What do you prefer? How do you prefer to I prefer the old, the old way of way. doing it, yeah, yeah, where you cut it lengthwise. And and I'm, I'm very old-fashioned like I, I, I got those popular in Gabecha. Are they popular? No, not really. Yeah. I'm teaching them. Yeah, no, I'm getting to the people of Gabecha. So but the other thing the you sauce? have to teach the people of Gabecha about is e acha, guys. I know, right? I know. Why are you people like this? Yeah, well, they are going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get there. They're going to get there. So just make so. sure when you, um, when you coat the cotton, yeah. you coat all the corners, the oh. crevices, because you need the sauce, otherwise it's not going to be nice yes, without it. Yes, nobody likes a drogh kota. 
so yeah. a little bit. So I call this sauce, this clover classic um, mayo sauce, mm -hmm. it's like the alpha and the omega of quarter. Love that. You start with the sauce. Okay. You stack your... That's your foundation. Yes, yeah, so you stack mm -hmm. your ingredients, then you do the in. lettuce. Lettuce going in. So you are getting some good things in there do as some well. Tomato. Some health, you know, some tomato yes. in there, some lettuce in and there. And you need the acid from the tomato with all that protein. Oh, good, because it neutralizes it's everything. Delicious. You see, you're the type of person I want in the kitchen because it's all about balance. <laughs> and I always say this, you need the balance, especially if you're going to be indulging. This is a great indulgence, but you want to make sure you, you manage it. Okay, and then what are we getting in there next? Some chips are in there. Let yes. me, I like to make sure that I know what the chips are like before we even start eating. And the chips need a bit of sizzling because it's South Africa and South Africa Street flavor. is all about flavor. Flavor, flavor. We have to Fra squash flavor. the chips mm. to, to make yeah. room for <laughs> the rest of for the everything ingredients. else because otherwise you're going to need a whole loaf. You'll never be able to yes. fit everything in. And then we okay, go cool. back to our sauce. Okay, cool. Back to sauce which you've so, got there. Well, yeah, listen, so this is the second layer. Well, what I like about what you're doing is that it's tangy all the way we like it. And you stand the chance at home to win a thousand rand cash voucher. Yes, how's that? Reply to the competition post on the Express or Facebook or Twitter page. Tell us what your uh, level of tangy with Clover Classic Mayo is. So, level one, level two, or level three, and uh, use the hashtag one or hashtag two or hashtag three. Don't forget to hashtag my classic tangy. That's a very important one. Hashtag my classic tangy. If you want the T's and C's to this competition, they are available on our site, Express or Show. Dot com and the acha goes in. You can't have a quota without this is an essential. It of is quarter. an essential. You see, like that is like you'll get nowhere without the acha in a quota. Yeah. This is the final product. This is what it looks like. Ah. Oh. I mean, there's no ways I'm gonna eat it the classic way on camera. It'll just not look good. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna do this just to taste all of the ingredients Go in our classic mayo to see how that's come through. Yeah, and you need it for mm -hmm. the chips anyway. Otherwise, the chips can taste a little meh without the sauce. <laughs> Are you ready for it? I am. I got, I got, I got, I got, I I I I I that brings out the traditional French in three levels of tanginess. The mild classic, the medium classic, the strong classic. Tangy, the way you love it. Made with love by Clover. So earlier we connected with certified coach Laura Markovitz right here on Express on S3 to talk about how parents can help their children develop a good level of self-worth apart from material possessions. Laura, welcome back. Hi, good to be back. <laughs> he called you a certified coach. Yes. Uh, that's in football, <laughs> rugby, <laughs> everything. And parenting. Okay, we know you can uh, do yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> the full, the full, the full thing. The Any full spectrum. <laughs> Uh, no, you're someone that we trust a huge amount and a resource I've leaned on as a, as a parent over the years. I, I love your perspective on things and how you can, I hate to say it, dumb it down for the likes of me. Um, but often these are, are simple principles that we ourselves need to learn how to live before we can transfer that to our knowledge. And that kind of feeds off what I'm wanting to get into now in terms of the link between money 
and value and our own self-worth and the monetary value of ourselves. Yet we also want to encourage a healthy understanding of yeah. value. We don't, yeah, I mean, material things aren't a bad thing in and of themselves. How do we find that balance within our children? Make sure that they're not too materialistic or that their self-worth isn't too tied into money, yet they also have a good sense of value so they can have that, that aspiration and, and the drive to be successful. Yeah, so, well, you know, I suppose we could get into a whole discussion about what we mean by successful, but I understand what, you, what, you, what you're talking about is we want to have a healthy rela relationship with, materialist, with material things, but we have to just remember we want to be careful of seeking material things all the time or, or searching for them or always wanting the next big, shiny, glittery, big thing out there because sometimes constantly trying to fill our lives with material things can mask some inner sense of insecurity or a lack of self-worth. So we really want to encourage our children not to be, well, encourage our children and ourselves not yeah. to be constantly trying to fill something with external things rather than working with what's going on inside us. Because we all know, you know, I, I know from the earlier animation kind of take the jacket away or take the material things away and well what are we left with sure. and we're still left with ourselves at the end of the day and we really want to get that message across to our kids so again with anything it starts our kids are sponges they see it around us it's no good us lecturing them and telling them you know it's a really good idea to have a good sense of value in life um when we are constantly constantly buying 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 um and trying to accumulate a Accumulate. So we've got to actually role model a sense of value. And that comes from basic things. That comes with who we are as people, how we relate to other people, what we do, what they see us do with our the money that we've earned, what we've done. And they're constantly watching. They're constantly seeing what we're doing. We also really want to teach them a sense of gratefulness and appreciation in things. So really encouraging basic things like manners. You say thank you. You, when you get something, you, um, you show that you value what you have received. Um, so we're teaching that to them all the time. And then also encouraging them to have a healthy relationship with money, you know, we might be saving and trying to, to um, get them the things that they want, but they don't have that sense of kind of having to save or to show value. So we teach them that if there's something that they really want, save for it. If they're getting gifts on a birthday or Christmas or whatever it is, that they also have a sense of giving to other people as well. So those are things that we can teach them, but it starts with showing them, you know, sitting them down and lecturing them about it's a good idea, <laughs> generally falls on deaf ears and goes over their heads. So it really is about showing them how we are in the world and um, with our own sense of value. And I, I suppose this last year has taught us that it's, it's not when you're riding high and you're able to get all those nice things that you need to really know your self-worth. It's when everything's been taken away. That's when you, especially in our game, which is a confidence game, you need to know your self-worth mm. when it's not attached to money or, or those sorts of things. Yeah, it, yeah the self-confidence, it, it, it really is a big thing, especially, yes, in our game. Because, you know, when you, when you have kids, they see you, they, you do your thing. Um, they say, hey, you know, you're going to TV, you're going to radio. This is going to be, you know, this is how you're going to find yourself. But I, I keep on having to, to tell the kids when it comes to authenticity, that's actually a lot more important. You know, they'll tell you, hey, why don't you upgrade your car? I'll be like, well, you know, I, I paid for the car, so why don't I need to upgrade? It's, it's my vehicle. So it's yeah. about modeling those yeah. centers of value with them. But it's also about yourself. And we live in a world of social media, let's be honest, where yeah. a lot of those benchmarks are all over the place. So I wanted to just ask you very quickly, mm -hmm. how do we help our kids find their own frequency in a world where there are so mm -hmm. many different outside influences that determine and yeah. say this is the way value should be? Mm, I mean, such an excellent question because, you know, we've always had peer pressure. We know peer pressure and what your friends have got and what you're seeing they've got and that influences um, particularly kids and then teens and it's still influencing us as adults. And now we add into the mix social media pressure where we are seeing kind of this um, curated world that um, in pictures of what people have and what they um, say that they're aspiring to have. So it's very, very hard. And I think what we can do 
at best, and we obviously cannot control our children and how they're going to be, but what we can do is get them to be critical thinkers about it. Talk to them about what they are seeing. Um, talk to them about marketing. Um, how, talk to them about social media and how we are being drawn in and what we are seeing. We've got to actually put it out there in terms of what we are facing in the world. And we cannot just ignore it and let us all be sucked into it. We need to actually create critical minds. So it means literally sitting at the dinner table and going, oh, I saw X, Y, Z um, on Instagram. What, what did you guys think of that? Getting them to evaluate, getting them to talk about it and getting them to be vulnerable. You know, we're all a little bit vulnerable sometimes and that makes us human. And it's okay to be vulnerable um, and if we share that with them that yeah it's a pity I don't have what whatever somebody else has to acknowledge that feel it that's a human experience and it's very much shared with us so a combination of keeping them critically thinking about what's around and them authentic, um, yeah. and also keeping them authentic um, absolutely. I absolutely love that. Thank you. I'm feeling a little bit vulnerable now for having opened up with you, but I think that's maybe where, it's, where it starts, is, especially with us men, is, yeah. is showing a little bit of vulnerability so they can model that behavior off you. Laura, um, as always, you are the coach of everything, and we love you. That was a wonderful discussion. Thank you so much for your time. Have an amazing Thank you. day. Thank you. You too. Good to be here. Bye. <laughs> That's Laura, she's fantastic. And over to some gentlemen who are very self-confident in a bid. Ah, <clears throat> oh, fantastic stuff. Now, here's a question. Did you know that <sighs> enough uninterrupted sleep <sighs> reduces stress and improves your mood? It well, now you know, does, now you know. We've been speaking does. about it. <laughs> and in fact, what we're doing here is we're giving you the chance to win this rest assured Ruby Queen size base set with a no turn mattress and an evolution pocket spring system. And listen to this, it's valued at 8,000 rand. It's a big prize, this. Yeah, and G and I yeah. spent some time on this bed uh, testing it out. Yeah, <laughs> <seen that. laughs> if you guys saw the show, and it is an absolute winner. You probably won't even last five minutes before you knock it off. So <laughs> to enter, reply to the competition post on Expresso's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram accounts, and tell us how you keep your mattress clean. And of course, remember to include that hashtag rest assured in your answer. And to see more on the rest assured products, follow them on Instagram at restassured.bids. Yep. And of course, there's one thing to do. What is it? Get comfy, mother. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, you can make my day. South Africans have proudly always been very savvy shoppers, but in the last year, Africa's retail giant game has seen the appetite for bargain hunting and unbeatable deals increase, understandably because we're all under a little bit of pressure at the moment. And Catherine Madley, the Vice President of Marketing, now joins us to discuss game's recent price perception survey. Very interesting stuff. And how they've established the need for programs like the price beat promise. promise. I like the sound promise, of that. Promise, promise. You want to echo it? Promise, That's promise, how good promise, it sounds. Promise. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you. Good to see you Thank in the flesh, you. in person. We yes, always lovely to that. be here. So let's start off. I, you know, whenever a, a company does research, it means you care about the people who are going to be supporting you. And I heard about a recent survey. And the survey said that people are using leaflets to compare prices more than Google. That's massive. Yes. Why do you think that is? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, I, I was in the Paul game store yesterday, and as I stood there, I stood there for over an hour, every single customer of every single age group, different background in that area was, was picking up a leaflet. Yeah. But that survey that we did prior to that proved to us that 70% of South Africans take the leaflets out of the, the newspapers each week and they compare. We are so uh, analog. We are yeah. so old Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. And 30% still use the Google search. An active shopper who is in their mind planning to buy a TV or a, a fridge or maybe a, a larger purchase will go onto Google and look around what's available in their area, etc., and what, what specials are on. And they will also look at the, at the leaflet. It's normally a bit of both, but nice. still strongly 70% of South school, Africans, man. they lay out those, those leaflets and, <laughs> and enjoy looking at them and comparing prices because they're savvy. They're savvy shoppers looking for a deal. I know you would have spent a huge amount on your market research. You've now just given it away for free. Thank you. Every yep. other retailer well out there, they now understand the need. The newsprint um, companies can thank me <laughs> as well exactly, for that totally. one. Exactly, for their revenue. Um, this obviously then it stands to reason that we, we're going to introduce something like the Price Beat Promise. And that's where other retailers maybe can't just step in and steal your researchers because they're not going to be able to just step in and beat your prices. How did you establish the need for this and, and why kind of develop this specific program? Well, it's, it's actually not been developed. It's just been resurrected. You know, a game was started in 1970 in, in Durban by two very savvy South Africans that, that came into the market and the stock that they bought, they beat the market by, by 30% <laughs> on that stock. So they used to buy large uh, stock lots and they would stack it high and, wa and watch it fly because it just... Stack it, it just, high and watch it yeah. fly. And, and they said to the market, if you can find the same thing for cheaper, we'll match and beat it by 10% of the difference. And that's a promise that's been around for 51 years. Wow. And I thought to myself, we need to resurface that. It's always been there, and, and South Africans know it, but I thought we need to make sure that everybody is is aware of it, because in the, in, the, in the times that we are living in, we need it. That's quite a precedent to set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can't go back. <laughs> but it's, it's so true, and I mean, it, there's a magnetism about it as well. How does it differ from the other loyalty schemes out there? So a loyalty scheme it works in two ways. The first way is you have to buy and earn and buy and earn and buy and earn and then, then redeem. And there, there's 81 in, in South Africa. Sure. So there's wow. even tiny retailers and bigger... I mean, I'm sure if you open your wallet, you'll see 10 yeah, uh, loyalty cards. I can't loyalty work, cards. open my wallet anymore because I've got yeah. so many yeah. loyalty cards in it. Yeah. <laughs> but with yeah. us, it's, in, it's instant. So we believe that every, every South African deserves to get the deal immediately. I like that. That, that you don't have to earn it or buy 10 of or whatever. It's, it's right there. We're giving it to you at everyday low prices that last long. You know, the prices are not going up and down. You know, they, they're sustainable prices. They last at least two weeks with the, you know, with, with the deals that we bring. So it's, inst it's instant. There has been a greater importance on, on just the basic staples, on pantry items, on groceries. How have you been able to buffer under such intense economic times, how are you able to achieve those lower prices where it matters most? Well, you know, Graham, if you think about that whole question and the South African landscape, I mean, it starts off by us making sure that the SASA grant recipient gets the full basket for the month. Wow. So, so yeah. that, that, that's your, your, your 10 kilo maize and your, your 10 kilo rice and your, your, you know, your larger oils and your, you know, your, your larger bulk purchases that we, put, that we put together for that customer. So that is deeply and well thought out so that customer can come and get their, their grant from game and then fill their pantry. Get the most back to, for their yeah, bank. To, to yeah. last. But then it, it moves up into another program called More for Less. And more for less is a, a lot of deals that are available at a low price for 90 days. So, so that you don't have to keep waiting anxiously for prices to, to go on special, if you want to call it that, for the weekend or <laughs> We're not next eating, weekend. We're oh, not eating rice this week. <laughs> yeah. We're only eating bread. Yes. Um. Where, whereas at game, you've got more for less on for, for 90 days. And that is working particularly well. For, for us to fill your pantry for, for less. With the situation as it stands, we find that the, the spirit of Ubuntu in South Africa of sharing is, is, is lovely. 
So with a, a more for less or with a, with a sasser deal, you can get that, that volume item and then share it. Well, added to this amazing opportunity, yes, for the consumer is an opportunity for our viewers to be able to enjoy revel in this Price Beat Promise with the Price Beat Promise Choir. They are here. We'll give you a bit of background in just a moment. And of course, they're going to be performing just for you. Indeed. And it's time to stop dreaming and compare prices with games. Price Beat Promise, definitely something to sing about, which offers a 10% refund on the difference in price on any item you've purchased. Mm -hmm. And you find it cheaper at a competitor within 21 days of your purchase, you're guaranteed a price beat on that item. Sure, oh, man. Store opening hours are from Monday to Friday, and that's from 9 up until 6, then Saturday from 9 until 5, and then Sunday and public holidays from 9 until 4. Catherine, we love you. We love what you're doing. Your mentality behind how you structure your pricing is just so commendable. So thank you so much. So good to have you in studio Absolute again. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Catherine. Thank you, Graham, as well as Carl. Time for us to take a look at those news headlines just after 7 o'clock here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Medical teams at the Red Cross War Memorial Children's Hospital in Cape Town have once again proved that they are among the best in the world. They successfully performed a delicate surgical procedure which separated Siposetu and Amahle Chalisi in four days after birth, rather four days after birth. Now, the twin girls born in the Eastern Cape in February were fused at the head and Professor Tony Figaji, head of pediatric neurosurgery at Red Cross, said the twins' condition was the rarest form of conjoined twinning, occurring approximately once in every 2.5 million live births worldwide. And people over 60 who have registered to receive the vaccine on the government system will soon receive a message to schedule their appointments. Minister of Health Dr. Zuelim Kiza yesterday said they were still on track to start the next phase of vaccinations by Monday. A list of approved vaccination sites will be published later this week. Uh, Dr. Mkiza said special arrangements will be made for the elderly who have bedridden uh, conditions and would not be able to visit vaccination sites for their COVID-19 jabs. In international news, a 13-story residential block in the Gaza Strip collapsed last night after an Israeli airstrike. Israel has uh, sent some 80 jets to bomb Gaza yesterday. In retaliation, Palestinian militants fired 130 missiles at the Tel Aviv for the second day, deepening a conflict in which at least 28 people and now 31 in the Palestinian uh, 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 area to uh, Israeli have thus far been killed. And meanwhile, in South Africa, several pickets and demonstrations were held across the country yesterday in condemnation of Israel's attacks on Palestinians living in the Gaza Strip. Kenyans are bemused by the news that uh, traditional alcoholic homebrew, which is not sold commercially at home, is selling like hotcakes in the UK. The fermented brew's key ingredients include honey and sausage-like fruit called muratina, which gives the drink its name. It's being marketed in the UK as a wine spiced with honey, and some Kenyans online have said they are happy to see muratina appreciated at last, while others are upset that the bottled muratina will not be available in supermarkets markets at home. And now, news from the world of entertainment. Shortly after US television network NBC on Monday dropped its envisaged uh, broadcast of the uh, Golden Globe ceremony in 2022, following a Hollywood backlash over ethics and lack of diversity, Tom Cruise returned the three Golden Globe statuettes that he's won for his roles in Jerry Maguire, Magnolia, as well as Born on the 4th of July. Streaming platforms and studios have led the revolt against the group that presents the annual awards for film and television, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, that's the HFPA. Although the HFPA agreed to recruit more black members and make other changes uh, over the next 18 months, NBC later said it would wait to see if Oscars, but it has been under close scrutiny after investigations showed that the HFPA group of 87 journalists, all 87, had no black members whatsoever. And that's where we leave it for now. The next update in just over an hour. Here's Graham with what's happening in sports. Fearless saves every month on insurance with First for Women. 
Thanks so much, to be. So let's uh, start here at home with footballing news. Premier Soccer League action continued yesterday with Baraka FC recording a 1-0 win over Amazulu FC at the King's Wellantini Stadium. So despite their loss, the Zuta remains second on the PSL log behind log leaders Mamelodi Sundowns, but it does dent their chances of chasing them down. In other results, Stellenbosch FC and Orlando Pirates played out to a goalless draw at the Donny Craven Stadium. Buccaneers missing the opportunity to go third, staying in fourth place after yet another draw this season and on to a bigger footballing news of course Pep Guardiola's Manchester City they've done it they've been crowned English Premier League champions for the third time in four seasons and they didn't even have to play a match that was after Leicester City recorded a 2-0 a 2-1 win rather over Manchester United at Old Trafford last night so City are now 10 points ahead of second place to United and that's an unassailable league uh, lead they've just got three league games remaining and this is their second trophy in a little over two weeks after they edged out Tottenham Hotspur 1-0 to claim the Carabao Cup. And of course, they'll still be in action in the UEFA Champions League final up against Chelsea. Then at the opposite end of the English Premier League table, Scott Parker's Fulham, they've been relegated from the league. That was after their 2-0 loss to Burnley on Monday night. The defeat left them in 18th spot with 27 points on the Premier League table. So Fulham now dropped down to the English Football League Championship along with West Bromwich Albion and Sheffield United also both relegated. That's where we leave our sport for this hour. Let's get another take on the weather. Let's do that. And thank you to all of our talented viewers that continue to share their beautiful sunrise vistas with us. It really starts our day off on the right note. Now, regular contributor Gary Ocum from East London shared this fantastic image with us where he was able to capture the sun rising in the distance while the moon was still visible. What a lovely way to start your day. And if you are in East London, you can expect times of sun and clouds reaching a maximum of 22 degrees Celsius. A thank you to Comisile Dlamini from Durban who posted this gorgeous view of the sun rising over the ocean. A Durban can expect a maximum of 27 degrees Celsius today with a stray shower in the afternoon. Now, please do continue to share your sunrise photos with us on the Expresso Facebook page. We really love seeing your part of the country and don't forget to share your location with us so we can give you a little brief forecast uh, of that particular area. Now, while we enjoy experiencing a sunrise from your part of South Africa, we have some international viewers tuning in both on YouTube and the Africa Channel platforms in the USA. And for your 7 a.m. Um, update, uh, we are reporting on weather forecasts in the area of Savannah, Georgia. Now, this is the oldest city in the state. Savannah is known throughout the country for its beautiful coastal landscapes, its well-preserved architecture, and its rich, vibrant history. It was a strategic port city in the American Revolution, and during the American Civil War, Savannah is today an industrial center and important Atlantic seaport. Your Wednesday will be cloudy and cooler, with occasional rain and a thunderstorm. The maximum will be around 24 degrees Celsius. Now, the warmer weather in the Northern Hemisphere recently saw a brown bear named Sleeping Beauty and a sister Snow White yawning and stretching their way out of their winter hibernation. Just in time to uh, greet visitors at the ZSL Whipsnade Zoo in Bedfordshire in the UK as it reopened after months of forced closure. Keepers spotted Sleeping Beauty and Snow White emerging from their den where they snoozed their way through the colder months of the year. But the zoo's third brown bear, Cinderella, decided to stay in bed for a little longer and staff at the UK's largest zoo captured the special moments on camera when Sleeping Beauty and her sister came outside and took time to reacquaint themselves with the sights and smells of the large woodland enclosure before having some breakfast and even a bath. ZSL Whipsnade Zoo is one of two zoos owned by the London Zoological Society, a charity devoted to the worldwide conservation of animals and their habitats. That's what you call a berry tale. Let's move on to the, some of the temperatures from across the country and starting off in Polokwane. It's uh, 8 in the morning. That's this morning, rising to 26. Bombela, 12 to 31. Pretoria, 27 is your max from a low of 9. Johannesburg, 24 is uh, your maximum. And that's from a minimum of 9 degrees Celsius this morning. Mai King, 7 to 26 today. Clagstorp, good morning to you. 6 the low. And that will move up to 27 just after 12. Kimberley, 8 to 26. Bloemfontein, 2, rising to 25 degrees Celsius. Richards Bay, you can expect 29. And that's from a low of 18. Peter Marisburg, quite warm your side. 30 the max from a low of 11. Uh, Durban, 17 to 27 with a 40% chance of showers. Mtata, 7 to 28. East London can expect 12 this morning, rising to 22. Craddock, 6 to 28 today. Khabecha, 11 to 20. George, 20 is the max from a low of 10. The Mother City, 10 to 19 for you. Worcester, 26 the high from a low of 8. Sutherland can expect 7 this morning. And
and that'll bump up to 22 later. Then Uppington wrapping up with you as always, 12 to 30 degrees Celsius. Keep on sending those sunrise photos to me. I love seeing them on the Expresso Facebook page as we get onto some more action right here on Expresso. Thank you very much, Carl. And yes, no matter what it's looking like in your part of the country, you are just on time to make it a feel-good type of day. Thank you very much for waking up with your feel-good breakfast show. So today is International, Nur International Nurses Day. It's a big, big day. And I think we commemorate the likes of Florence Nightingale, who obviously uh, did lead the charge in terms of what modern nursing gets to look like today. We asked you this question, which nurse has changed your life or really helped you in the most amazing way that you'd like to give a shout out to? And we take a look at your comments right now uh, have come through on social media Bonginkosi Makubani says putting on a great smile it's not something you always wake up to my local nurses uh, always go extra mile in making sure I get the right service with a sincere smile you might even be mistaken thinking that her genuine smile is more than what it meets or more than what meets the eye Yep, I call it a calling. Bongin Gossi, completely agree with you. Sometimes the healing starts right there. When they smile at you and they say, welcome. And you're like, ah, oh, suddenly you feel so much better. And then we got another one from Vuyi Nongkosi saying, Sister Mabaso at Charlotte Makleke Hospital Oncology Department. She cared about her job uh, when I was a patient there. I was difficult. I absconded. I was a real cancer patient with my, oh, I'm tired of being pricked moments. And she was lovely. I love that. That's the sort of story you want to be here. Uh, and there are so many of them. And I think that, especially during these COVID times, a lot of us would have had to interact with nurses. We've gotten to meet them and seen their magic come alive. Uh, we've got an image of a nurse there uh, from Roshana Uraju Gavinda. I mean, how beautiful. I mean, that smile is stunning. Look at that smile. If I had flu and I went and I met this nurse there, no need to put me on antibiotics. I'm fine. I am healed. I found healing. But let's read the message uh, uh, that comes through uh, uh, just with that smile there. It says, Happy Nurses Day to all my fellow colleagues, co-workers, and every nurse out there. Keep up the good work. So Roshana is actually a nurse. Roshana, keep up the good work. Thank you very much for sharing those. Please do continue to do so. That hashtag, once again, is Expresso Show. Which healthcare worker changed your life? Why did they do it? How did they do it? And if you've got a picture of them, please post it. The ultimate accessory, the latest shiny thing, mesmerized, trying to keep up but never getting ahead in an endless cycle of spending. In this world of constant upgrades, do you want a bank that takes your money or a bank that takes your money seriously?
welcome back, you beautiful souls. It is such a good time. We'll get to that later, but we're talking about an Hollywood actor, director, screenwriter, producer. His name is Vin Diesel, and he's best known for his portrayal of Dominic Toretto in the Fast and the Furious franchise. Now, Toretto, yo. despite being 53 years old, he's been healthy, he's maintained a good body. It's toned, it's appreciated by fans all over the world. And this morning, we're gonna be taking you through how to get a body like Vin Diesel, starting with a chest and arm workout, and guess what? We got the OG in the house. She's joining us this morning, the Ren. Only, the only person closest to think... 53 years old in the studio. We hear that. Round of applause for you, man. It's been a while. So this is. Uh... But this is, this is interesting because you, you've obviously had a front row seat to my kind of fitness journey. I've what now journey, only man, yeah. just entered into that phase where I can start picking up weights again, where I can actually start doing the fun stuff. Yeah. It's not just rehab, rehab, rehab. It's like I can actually do it. So I'm looking forward to some functional exercises and, and leaving this five minute session with a body like Vin Diesel. Okay, that's the, that's right, the provider. Right. The fact that yeah, you came through, it's enough. Of course, Gia, I've got to commend you on the journey that you have to get to this point in time. I don't think yeah, anybody's yeah, actually yeah. going to realize what work went into it, man. So well done. Thank you. Well done. Let's get cracking into it. it. Now man. we can start playing some games. <laughs> of course, we're going to start off with Vin Diesel's workout. This is an actual workout that he did to prepare for his movie, some, such as Fast and the Furious. So we're literally replicating it as is. We're starting with a push-up. Cool. You know the man's got such big upper body, right? So there's various ways to do the push-up. The most important thing, of course, is to not make your elbows flare when they go out. Okay. Keeping your elbows, sort of have your ditches facing the front. Elbows go towards your glutes, right? So when we're going down, good control, nice hold, and then all the way straight back up. Man, it looks like you haven't been gone for a year at all, man. Just picking up from Yeah, you. man, no, it's, uh, and I feel it. I feel every push-up, trust me. Um, nice. But I suppose, yeah, you're working the chest and you're working the tricep. Exactly, and on top of that, you're also working the core to keep your body nice and stabilized. Sure. And you will know how important that is, G, to keep Probably the stable. most important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep you stable and keep the, the pressure off your back by letting the muscles work. Now, of course, Vin Diesel's arms are an actual joke. I'm sure you've seen <laughs> that in the movie. An they look joke. like an actual <laughs> joke. They look like arms. I mean, they look like legs, sorry. So we're going to try. <laughs> they look like arms. <laughs> but they're actually legs. <laughs> so we're going to try and replicate that. And exactly what he did, did is the following. He went for four sets for each of these exercises, as many reps as he could do in 60 seconds. And then he took a 120 second break in between every exercise. So and it's nice having a structure like that where you push yourself because you get the heart rate up. You, you kind of get your flow as you always use. Yes, yeah? you can get in that zone. You've got a minute to kind of capture it. So starting with something simple, we're going to hit the short head of the bicep, get that peak, keeping your arm and your ditches facing in the front keep your elbow close to the body so no swinging of the arm you don't want to use your back for this one and it's a basic arm curl so straight up towards your uh, face and then straight back down controlling it all the way down of course beautiful form you don't want to move any of this part of your arm you just want to isolate that bicep getting a nice big peak on there and 60 seconds of this is really going to get a good burn in yeah now. are you feeling over there no, I like it, and, and it's worth like, actually... Man. Oh, no, I appreciate it. I appreciate the fact <laughs> that you gave me the little... Where the handle is bigger than the, the bell, that's... I like it. I actually I appreciate that. Um, but it's, it's worth thinking about that isolation when you actually do the exercise. Often you'll just do it and go into your other space, but some of the best kind of the fitness models, the, the bodybuilders, they say like that mental focus on the muscle that you're working Understood. helps you get the right form and it's, it's vital. It's speaking about mind-muscle connection. There we and go. It literally can increase your capacity, increase that stimulation by 50%. So literally what he means is look in the mirror, look at your bicep, engage and think about it growing as you squeeze and Talk you to literally it. grow, <laughs> baby, grow, come on! <laughs> and I promise you, it will grow, believe it or not. Right, next exercise, G. Oh, I like that. That's a good one, y'all. Get a nice burn. You probably will feel some veins popping through at the end of that. And this is a good pre-weekend. Get, <laughs> get, the, get the pump I'm, in the bike kind of I'm workout. I like it. When I used to go out in my varsity days when I was studying, <laughs> I used to hit Claremont up. I would wear the smallest T-shirt, go to the gym at, at like Virgin or something, and kind of just pump the pies. <laughs> and when that vein came through, Sweet, I'm, I'm ready to the bro. clubs, man. <laughs> Protein chest. <laughs> All right, so we got one last one over here. This is a fun one. This is um, basically like bent over rows, but with a single okay. arm. So so we are going to get our legs a little bit further back just to work the core more. So you'll feel Great. some stimulation there. Then from the ground, we want to pull this thing almost like we're starting a lawnmower. As high up as we can, keep that control, lift it up high. You're going to be working the bicep and the lat and then bring it straight back down to the ground once again. And you can repeat that 60 seconds in total. You should feel some arm movement, but also a little bit in that lat. Gee, I don't know yeah, if you're getting that. For sure. Yeah, a nice rotation of the body is going to work that lat a little bit more. And that's going to give you that, you know when Vin Diesel kind of walks over and he does that slow motion walk. He doesn't just walk like a normal person. Somehow these lats pop out and he goes, 
and then he starts to walk. And this is where you're gonna get that feel. This is that exercise, you're gonna get Vin Diesel ready, man. But it's a system, <laughs> the buys, the back, they all work in unison. All work in unison, and we've got one more exercise. We're gonna hit those triceps now, because that's gonna complete the arms. You guys can see that screen picture of him right now on that slide. It looks like a thigh. So we've hit the biceps, <laughs> we hit the lats. We Dragging two Rottweilers <laughs> around with him wherever he goes down. Exactly, <laughs> man. And then we did a little bit of the shoulders as well in those push-ups. Now we wanna hit those triceps. That's about 60% of the arm. That's that shoe on muscle that you kind of see here. It gives that real size. Pick your dumbbell up. It's called skull crushes, but we're gonna do it seated. Right, so 60 seconds. You guys at home, you wanna basically bring the weight right behind your head, but don't move your elbows and don't move your bicep area of your arms, and then press it straight up into the air, squeezing your arms, squeezing those triceps, and then bringing it straight back down once again. Grow, 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 grow baby, brother. grow! <laughs> 60 seconds of this. You guys can join in on the next session. Myself and G gonna be taking it down. Stairs to the lower body, you're working the legs straight after this. Because every day is leg day. Every day is leg day, of course, guys. Let us know if you enjoyed this workout. You don't have to use a kettlebell. Use a water bottle, get anything at home, and come join us for the next round where we're gonna get you Vin Diesel ready. Nice, Jim. Beautiful, Six man. Seconds. Grow! <laughs> 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 uh, can I just get you ready as well? Because the thing is, you can't get ready in the kitchen. I mean, we came to transforming his body into a lean fighting machine that says stuff like, doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, winning is winning, Vin Diesel's routine. And one of the main protein sources that fuels that routine is tuna. And we're about to make something eccentric, amazing, and beautiful. It is our next African dish. Stand by. Clover cheese is for those who love life, where everything falls into place and melts away our cares, adding joy and stretching our imagination. Clover, for the love of cheese. Made with love by Clover. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry, it's, it's my muscles <laughs> that's sticking out. So as we continue to inspire you with recipes during Africa Month, we turn your attention to Tunisia with our clover feta and tuna brick. Similar to a South African samosa, the popular street food is made with a pastry called muslaka. Ooh, I love that word. Which you can substitute with phyllo pastry and it will still have that elite quality, elite taste and elite texture thanks to clover cheese. And Chef Pumla shows us exactly how we're going to do this. And I, you know what? I think we need to eat because we're going to look like Vin Diesel after this as well. You know what I'm saying? I mean, who doesn't want to look like Vin Diesel? That, that's it. You understand what I'm talking about? I know you're trying to talk and my muscle is sticking out. I apologize. But let's try and get through this. It is so lovely having you today. You know that? Well, it is so lovely to be back here. Yes. So <laughs> vibrant. So uh, where do we start this amazing recipe? It is very straightforward. Okay, cool. Um, so we've got substitutions because we won't have the muslaka. Yes. We have filo pastry. Perfect. So what we have there is some oil getting hot and getting ready for our um, brick. Okay. So what you're gonna do yes. here, Carl, you're going to chop the, I've got some herbs here, so I pre prefer a bit of mint for the freshness yes. and some parsley. Roughly, it's rich food, so it's roughly So chopped. you want me to do a fine dining chop? No, you want to do we're a not going that chop. direction today. You want to do a Vin Diesel chop? Okay, cool, I <laughs> no, can do that for you. No, we're doing just roughly no chop. No problem, so I'll take a bit so of this So I'm going to um, mix my ingredients. All right. So in one bowl, you've got potatoes, they are cooked. That protein for the Vin Diesel muscles, <laughs> some tuna. Thank you very much, that's the whole idea. <laughs> some eggs to bind the ingredients. So we've got two eggs there. Perfect. And a bit of Lots seasoning. of protein. I see the protein is in there. Even though we're going to fry something, yes, the precisely. protein is still there. You need proteins. It's good. So a bit of a black pepper. So we've used black pepper because we're going to add, we're going to give um, our brick, you yes. know, like a clover twist. So we're using black pepper feta. I love that one, by the way. That's the one I use most often because I yeah. think it's the pops of the black pepper that add a bit of, I'm gonna call like the spice, you know, lifts yes. the flavor quite nicely, which is great. Yeah, I've yeah, chopped your herbs, nice and rustic well. Bring and them over. Can I do, okay, great so stuff. So you crumbled some of your clover feta. You can right. also use other cheeses really, like other clover cheeses, okay. like your- The cheddar? Cheddar, for example. That'll work beautiful. White or yellow, the gouda as Ooh, well. Look at that. So a bit of salt for seasoning, but not too much because the feta is salty. Indeed. So Can add I, them. Okay, I'm ready for you. There it goes, beautiful. So the same goes um, with your herbs. You can use other herbs, really. So you mix those together. I love Just the mix. Make sure okay. that the, air, the egg actually coats everything because it's um, the ingredient that's going to bind everything. So we can move this and show you how that's to good. assemble. By the way, I put up a picture of Vin Diesel for you to inspire you a little earlier, uh, just <laughs> to make sure. Just focus on the biceps and he said, there we go, just turn around there. There's a picture, it's there, it's on the screen. Can you see it? That, that just, you can see there. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, it's no, yours. You Just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to distract you, <laughs> this but is, for you, is it working? Is it? Okay, good. Yeah, go ahead. So we're using uh, filo pastry. All right. So we're trying to mimic the muslaka. Okay. I have, I've I got to like well. the word. Do you know how to roll? Do I know how to roll? Well, no, yes. actually, I want you to teach me how to okay, roll. Okay, I'll teach you how to roll. The um, only roll I know how to do, spoon. I can do bowling, ten pin bowling. That's where I roll as well. Occasionally, when I walk, they call that a roll too. So <laughs> I try my best. Okay, let me see how you're doing this. So when you put the filling, okay. make sure it's at an angle. Right, angled filling. Step one. Yes. Step so two. So you're going to. Uh, at an angle, then you close it. You see, already you have a triangle shape there. I love that. Yes. You can actually dip your fingers just a bit. Okay. And you just seal end. it. Yeah, for sealing it. This is great. And then you continue in that fashion. Absolutely. Until incredible. it closes. And then you get what we'd call a samosa, but of course it's yes, not. Yes, in yeah. South Africa, it's a we call it a samosa. samosa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the fillings are different. Yeah, I can, so I can tell. So you feel like you've gone to Tunisia. Yes. So here, okay. we have our ready-made ones. Look at you, and I mean, did that set up in the fr fridge a bit, or do you just do it straight you, into the... You can put it in the fridge to set okay. up a bit, but just be careful, do it before, don't do it beforehand, like okay. way ahead, because it'll dry as well. Perfect. So, in our hot oil. All right, so obviously when you put something in oil, you always away from yes, you, Yes, hey? away from you, That's so you're it. not doing that. Because usually if you are going to do this and you're trying to get a Vin Diesel body, um, <laughs> you're obviously not going to wear a lot of clothing and you could get, you know, so splashed with hot oil. You don't want that to happen. No, it you don't sense. want that to happen. Yeah. And oil can be difficult to get off your clothes. Uh, yeah, indeed, you know. Yeah. So, so I, this I like takes this. about 40, 30 to 45 um, seconds All right. to brown, you will see. So your oil has to be hot before you can dip them. Okay. That's actually a very, very good point. So you have to keep turning. Sometimes I notice it just turns by itself. It, it happens. Yeah. I, I, I was hoping that my body would turn into Vin Diesel's by itself, but then it didn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm hoping with the, we have another seg segment that you can watch because I know you're enjoying it. Look Pumla. at that. But what I want to do is I know of course, I'm in the magic of TV. We've actually made some a little earlier. And you don't mind if I give it a try on that side because I know you've made it. I'm, okay. I just I want to just walk over to here and just give it a shot. So, this is your handiwork, isn't it? Duh. I'm ready. Is okay. that even a question? Mm. Oh, the crunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's the crunch for me. Okay. You're going to want this because ExpressoShow.com has a recipe. We even have a recap for you because you're going to want to do this, not this weekend, today. You will do this today. And if you want proper fuel, never mind diesel. Try these. <laughs>
thanks for staying with your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on S3. Now, the Fast and the Furious franchise has come a long way, G-Man. Yeah, Jeez, from uh, electronics theft and street racing, we've seen it all. And never has that been more evident than in the newly released second trailer for F9, the ninth film in the series. It's all the hype and excitement at the moment. Yeah, man, because we love them. And each one is as good as the last, if yeah. not better. Now, the first trailer that we saw back in Feb of 2020 showed us magnet planes and rocket-powered Pontiac Fiera, yep. but we should know that these are probably just the tip of the iceberg. And Grant Hines joins us to talk about what we've seen in terms of the tech. And we love the tech uh, in this instance. We we, we're going to see such larger-than-life, um, uh, I think, action and tech being used in ways that we never dreamed possible. Grant, very good morning, my friend. How are you, buddy? I'm great, and I'm so excited for another Fast and Furious film because I love watching them because they're just so wild, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. And uh, one of the things that they're starting to dabble in, which I really like, is they're starting to go into more technology than they are mm. into the cars or adding the technology to the cars because they're running out of cars to race, um, <laughs> which is great. Uh, so we're having these really cool stuff that's being dropped in the trailer. Yeah. So the first thing, obviously, it's an action movie. Most of this stuff isn't real. It can't happen in real life. And if it does, if you go to the movie, if you're that person that takes their date out to the movies and you have coffee afterwards trying to convince them that this movie was all 100% true and real, then you're probably not going to have a second date. No. It's, it's bad <laughs> like when it comes to, when it comes to the, the, the realism of it. But switch off your mind and have fun. And it is based on real stuff. So firstly, you saw a magnet flying car in the trailer. Yes. So Charlize Theron flies a plane over and like puts a magnet, uh, picks up a car with a magnet. Um, that same technology is actually what they're trying to do is if you've seen a film or if you've ever been to a metal scrap yard, there's an electromagnet that yeah. lifts up the, the cars. Yes. Now, they've kind of put that on a plane so it can lift up anything underneath it that's metal. And with electromagnetics, you can switch it on and off. It's not just like a static magnet. So how that works is that you can reverse the polarity by running the current in two different directions within an electromagnet. electromagnet. So, you know, have you ever used magnets before? You can, yeah. They can either like attach or they will repel Push. each other. You switch that on, the car is gonna be sucked up into the plane or sucked up onto that electromagnet. So that was the one use case of it. I think they are, based on the trailer, I think they kind of steal that technology because what they do on the road is actually really cool. They seem to put the electromagnets on their car on the sides and then change the poles to negative and the cars shoot out from mm, away from them. Wow. Which is really cool. I just, <laughs> well, it, 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 there's a whole bunch of like action scenes that can happen as a result. And, and that sounds like it certainly does make for thrilling viewing yeah, experience. You all the want way, to man, watch yeah. that and take it all in. But I mean, we're seeing so many techniques that are coming through here, uh, especially in animation in the way that they're able to express on that. What are some of the standout ones for you, Grant? This movie, because everything isn't uh, necessarily based in reality, and we're kind of making up our own physics to make the most exciting movie that we can possibly <laughs> make, um, they have to rely on a lot of that. And there is a lot of like real uh, effects I can see in some, of the, in some of the trailers, but graphics have come through to such a degree that we can do like wild things. There's a scene in the trailer where he's trying to get across a between two islands actually. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? And he wraps the car, gets the car wheel stuck into into a into a rope and then like basically swings across. Like that that is all CG. That's not real. But he's wow. not presumably, really doing that. Presumably, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad it's I know not you real. like Vin Diesel, Graham, <laughs> but he's not doing that in real life, okay? Uh, I think he could do it. Now but, talk me through the space flight Pontiac Fiera. <laughs> what okay, on earth so, is that? So they've got to make it bigger and better and oh, with yeah. every, you know, from Fast and Furious 5 up until now, I think that's, that's like the prime part of the series. Uh, they have to go and do some like wild stuff. We obviously don't know what the story is. And even if I did know, I wouldn't be able to tell you because it would be a spoiler. Yeah. But they go to space. Uh, they kind of teased it in the, in the in the in the trailer a little bit, but to get a car to space, you know, they can't just go in a normal spaceship. This yeah. is Fast and Furious. You need to get a car to space, so you need to make a car space-proof. So you can see in some of the footage, they've got like bolts. They've kind of really modded this vehicle to withstand high uh, low low oxygen and high pressure. You can see that. That's what they've been doing, and then they've mounted two. <laughs> 
I can't believe I'm actually saying this. They've mounted two rocket propelled like engines on top of the car. Do not do this in real life. <laughs> if you think, I'm just saying, they, I, there's gonna be people out there who think that they can do this in real life. It is a, there's a certain weight that the car has <laughs> and you can't, and if you put, the, that's that's how to die in two seconds. But that's I'm not saying, listen, well, anyone who'd go to the effort of trying to do that but in real Elon life. Elon Musk strapped a car to the front of a rocket and sent that up to space. So <laughs> listen, man, I, I think weight, anything weight. <laughs> The weight of the rocket versus the weight of the, of the, of the car. Oh, you can car. do that. You can't do it the other way around. Uh, but I really want to see what happens. There's a little bit of comedic relief in the trailer there. And I really want to see what happens with the story because I've, I hope they get to the moon. I just I want them to drift on the, on moon. the moon. Why yeah. aren't we doing this in a fast and furious film? Uh, it, it'll fun. happen, bro. If it doesn't happen in F9, it'll happen in F10, 11, or 12. At some point. Because they will, they will happen. happen. Uh, buddy, thank you so much for sharing your childlike enthusiasm and excitement <laughs> that we share about the fast and furious franchise. Like you say, switch your mind off, turn your motor on, mm. and just enjoy the ride. It's going to be a blast. But, buddy, thank you so much. Thank you. I, yeah. I'm so excited. I can oh, see. And it's only going to be a blast. See. We can <laughs> see. We're excited, too. He's got our appetite buzzing for it with Cypher, played by our very own Shalise Theron as uh, the villain. We're bound to it's see so a lot more tech in this film. That's what it's all about, as she's a you know, cyber terrorist and she's used advanced tech in the mm -hmm. past, and it's all coming together. I love it. Oh man, so what do you expect to see in the new film? You can let us know. Hit us up on the Expresso Morning Show Facebook page. What are you most excited about in F9? And what do you think they're gonna blow our minds with? What new car, new tech is gonna surface now? On planet yeah. or possibly off it? I need to go to a scrapyard to go find some engine propellers to try and see <laughs> if I can experiment. Get an aeronautical, I don't know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I bet I could do some of those stunts. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure of it. I just need a car, though. <laughs> but we are back right now, and it's obviously that exciting part of the show. We're doing round two of our fitness segment on how to get a body like the award-winning action star Vin Diesel himself. Now, the actor stays in shape and eats up to six to eight small meals a day. So he's putting in the cows and putting the fuel in for it, and he's focusing on core training exercises, practices proper breathing, and he remains positive right throughout the day. Now, these are some of the boxes he ticks when he gets ready for all his films and just the way he lives his life. Now, on Fridays, Vin Diesel focuses on legs and here are a few of the exercises in his leg day work and I thought I'd run you through it while G's just getting changed. He's almost ready. G, you ready for us? Man, that was quick, brother. Nice. <laughs> 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 Ready for it, he's here for it. How are you feeling after round that one? An, that was an exhausting change. I was gonna ask you, was, was that more nice. intense than our first fitness my session? Heart, after watching the just the snippets from F9, bro, my, my little <laughs> heart is going like this, dude. I, I so badly oh. want to be Vin Diesel or John Cena, actually, right now. I'll be goody or baddie, I don't Keep care. Keep those around for your money with that pace that you just pulled out in that Ooh. change. But anyway, okay. guys, let's get back to it. We're doing, obviously, if you watched the show earlier, uh, just a few minutes ago, we were clapping Vin Diesel upper body workout and now we're moving to the lower half and this is an exact workout once again that he does with his legs and the same principle applies so 60 seconds on 120 seconds or two minutes of rest and four sets of each exercise will complete your workout but if his arms look like legs what do his legs look like you know i haven't actually <laughs> seen his legs G. <laughs> they look I, like, I, like I, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> it looks like two uh, torsos he actually is uh, <laughs> one of three brothers and the other two brothers are his legs <laughs> <laughs> So let's get to this. We're starting off with a wide sumo squat, okay? So we're not only going to be working the glutes as part of the legs, but we're also going to be working those internal adductors and abductors, right? So a nice big split stance. You okay, can have your feet really wide. No, really yeah. wide. Almost like you'd see a sumo wrestler when, they, when they're stancing just to kind of get ready for their match. From here, you want to maintain a neutral spine. Remember that back for you is really important. We're going to get even better than that. You can see the guy's bulked up, though. He's yeah, thick. I see why he wears a vest quite it's often. It's a there. man muscle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, all we're going to be doing is maintaining a neutral spine, lowering the weight all the way to the ground, making sure that we don't bend over. And I'm going to show you a side view now for the don'ts, because G's doing all the yeses, and I'm going to do the no's. So when you're going down, I don't want to see you rounding your back over like this. That's going to put too much pressure here. Also, at the same time, I don't want your chest to be rounded over. We want to be like a gorilla, nice and tall, nice and strong, and a nice neutral spine. And that gorilla stance is really what's going to get you that ext extension and 
that eccentric load in those glutes. How's it feeling? I mean, I, I discovered that in trying to, kind of like with the piriformis, and trying to protect the, the sciatic nerve in this region, how important getting the right, activating those glutes and getting those muscles going. So now it, it feels so good to be able to know that you're hitting that zone and getting that right, you know? Back Love it. The game, cheese cool. back, people. So we're going to do something called uh, lunges, but it's got a twist in it. So it's going to involve the core as well, because we want to add some more six-pack onto Vin Diesel. Why not upgrade him while we're at it? So what we're going to do is a nice flow at the same time. This movement already is forcing my shoulders and my upper body and my core to come into play. Now we're going to go with the right leg for a forward step into our lunge. Nice control. And while we are lowering ourselves, we're going to twist over to the other side. That's going to force that core control. And then exploding back up for the restart. Now you can do it on the other leg, left leg forward, going into a twist. Hey, your form is impressive, my man. And then straight back up. And Zanzi, how are you feeling over there? Let's go for one more on this side. And nice little twist and exploding back up. Once again, 30 seconds on of that. I must say, the heavier weight over here, I'm feeling it in my shoulders as well. I don't know, it <laughs> seems too easy for you. I, I underestimated uh, your strength today. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm feeling it, but I, I, like, I like being conscious about what you're doing and really thinking about kind of which muscles you're activating about that form. And I obviously have to be so careful, yeah. um, but I'm finding it, I get more of a workout being more careful as opposed to just Coing. It's like quality over quantity. Completely. That's exactly what you're Completely, talking about. So it's yeah. all about the efficiency and the efficacy of the movements. We want to get the best bang for our buck. Sure. And at the same Love time, that. we want it to also correlate into other movements. So, I mean, talking about boxing, something that Vin Diesel does quite often, you don't just need an upper body for boxing. I mean, yes, he's got movement, but look at that shape coming from the core, coming from the feet, all the way down to the ground. And that's, yeah. yeah, exactly. And you see how your foot moved there. And that's why it's so important to still work the entire body. So let's work the calves because that's something in a huge use in your punch to draw that energy. So we're going to place our kettlebells on the ground. You can use a dumbbell for this. Essentially what we're doing, and again I'm going to show you from the side, just so you can see why the dumbbell's in this position, it allows for an eccentric load. So I really want to get my calf to go all the way down, get a good stretch before I raise it up to the ground again. So an elevated calf raise is always so going to be a, a good thing. a small step or something that allows you yeah, just to just get, to that, get that, eccentric. Angle, that eccentric load and then I can get my calf all the way up. Obviously you want to try to balance this as well. If you can do it on one leg, that's amazing, but that is going to in incorporate and involve stabilizers as well. As well. Yeah. Yeah. Core is vital. Gee, nice, I gotta say, man, so it much, feels man. good having you back, brother. It's oh, been a that long was journey. good. Don't expect it next week, <laughs> but uh, no, that was lovely, dude. Thank you so much. Picked up some absolute gems there. Thank you, really man. good. And of course, from the man himself, showing you that you got no excuse. Even if you're coming back from horrible, horrible injuries, we got you covered. We got everything to help you and assist you get Vin Diesel ready. And in no time at all, people, mm, you're gonna be shaking and baking like that. Yeah. Rum, rum. <laughs>
Yes, welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's Expresso, live here on S3. You're just in time to get the 411 on the latest movie trailers that are out there whetting your appetite for the cinema. And the man himself is here in the house, JP Sebastian, to give us just that, that 411. So much hype beforehand, it's like, <laughs> and then cut to like the nerdiest guy in the studio. Like, everyone's like, oh, the full one. I get excited. I, 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 I get so excited. And you just can't hide it. I just can't. Which is precisely why you would never survive in a quiet place, too. I know? wouldn't survive in any quiet place, whether it was one or two, but two maybe it more. It would so. be a very short movie. I'd hope yeah. that you'd be nominated for it at least, but uh, you'd last three minutes, maybe. A quiet place. So the premise well, looks. Just so you know, yep. uh, 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 go ahead. What's well, your I'm looking at the, the poster for it, right? Mm -mm -mm. Just seeing that black and white okay. with font in red, I'm already just like, yes, like it. <laughs> hey? Probably not going to be a romantic comedy, is Tell it? Tell us more. Uh, so just so you are filled in, this is the sequel, obviously, to a yeah. movie where if humans make a noise, aliens come. Oh, Simple as that. Okay, well, no, uh, I'm that, not going there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. Nice to know you. Yeah. Think of a nice eulogy. You know what we're seeing beforehand is that character, I will spoil it for you, Toby, so sorry, because yeah. the movie is like two years old by now. John Krasinski is free. And so what this movie will give us an insight into, obviously, is how did stuff go down to begin with? How yeah. did these aliens come to Earth? His name is Freck in the movie. Uh, if, uh, no, it's... <laughs> no, he is dead. Oh, okay, okay. Is... I thought it was such a South African name. <laughs> Freck Duplessis. Is, uh, is anyone named Freck out there? Please contact <laughs> us on social media. I'd love yeah. to know. Um, or Sat, I believe. Um, the, Emily Blunt, who is yeah. magnificent and married to the director of this movie, John Krasinski, yeah. the dude who is... Uh, dead in English for you, dear Tabiso. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, as well as the origin, we're seeing the sense that these characters now they were bunkered down. They were thinking, let's just stay on the farm mm. where we can get through this mess just like that, but now they have to leave because the farm burned down in the last movie. They're finding other people, including Cillian Murphy, Peaky Blinders guy. Oh, word. And when last did I see him in a movie? It's been a while since I've seen him on the screen. And uh, yeah, and he's, he's doing so well. He's got a great scary oh. face. Yeah. Uh, he's perfect for these kinds of things. Uh, Jimon Honsu as well, I love dearly. And this trailer, I think it's flirting with us. In a, in a nice way. It showed us the alien. Okay, so there's once in the background. That's that's not a friendly face. Do not make a noise when that thing's around you. And I think that, you know, going into the whole human drama, oh shame, Cillian Murphy had a son. Yes. Oh shame, Jim and Hansen says, we're, you know, if we're not all together, if we're not unified, we're not going to yeah. get through this. It's it's uh, maybe detracting from the fact that hopefully it is a bunch of gore. Hopefully it is going to, you know, take it into what do these things look like? Mm. What are new attacks? Are there other species of these things? I think it's just to mess with you that, oh, there's a lot more human drama in this yes. one. Yes. Do you know what, what reminds me of? I, I can't remember what that movie is called with Sandra Bullock and she's got the two kids, bird boy box. and girl. Bird Box. There's an element of the, Bird the, Box. No, this, this, this is the movie that launched a thousand gimmick horror things. That's so it. now there's one coming out where people can't sleep. Uh, not even kidding. Uh, what, what would well, be, sounds, what yeah, would be well. a no-go for you? I'd say like <laughs> everyone has to knape or something. Uh, <laughs> that's the only way humans can survive in my horror movie. Wow, this is insane. But we've got another one. <laughs> we've got another one. This one is called Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage. And, and you are clearly a connoisseur of Venom as well. No, shame, you have not seen it. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 do you care about superhero movies? Um, n not anymore. I used to uh, when I was younger, but I think once you've seen a few... Fatigue. You're just like... But maybe this will change my mind. This right? one's interesting. So, uh, the first one is Tom Hardy, who's usually, you know, the madman at the yeah. wheel, whether it's Mad Max Fury yeah. Road, whether it's Bane in Batman. He's great as a scary, imposing, super... This, to use the stupid term that modern men use, alpha character. Yeah. Uh, and in this, however, he plays this sort of nerdy guy who's psychic to a much more testosterone fueled alien force that inhabits yeah. his body. <laughs> the sequel Venom that we're looking at here... Mm. Why did I put an accent on that? That's weird. Uh, is... Uh, what? what what, what's, uh, so he's this dude who's in, uh, got this parasite inside him, but he's also a journalist. He's mm. trying to do his job, figuring out where are these hidden bodies that this new uh, threat has been murdering, played by Woody Harrelson. I'm trying to follow the footage at the same time, but yeah. we're about to see Woody Harrelson, who we love dearly. Last hey. big sort of uh, oh, whoa, uh, blockbuster thing that he was in was in the Planet of the Apes series. But in this... Uh, he returns again to this sort of like mad, maligned character, the wire has gone bad, he's yep. a serial killer. Uh, Tom Hardy's character is on the trail for what he's doing. And he turns into this character, Carnage, who is oh, now the new bad guy. Oh, let there be Carnage. Yeah. We love a serial killer. Alien parasites, serial killers. It's a strange mix. We love how, yeah. 
like, like, I'm just grateful. Sometimes it's a breath of fresh air. If not every superhero movie is like, we have to save the entire planet. It's just a crime drama, obviously, at some level, but yeah. also it's gross tentacles, tongues, claws. I think that's what makes awesome. uh, the, 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 the character so interesting, is that it's so gross and with the tentacles. And Everyone's using, like, these, like, watch. you know, nicely ironed superhero suits Ooh. and capes and whatever, but this thing is fraught to look at, and, yeah. and it's actually tons of fun, uh, the first one at least. So this one, they and definitely lean into the buddy comedy thing. Fair. Okay, well, listen, we'll, we've got a uh, food trailer you don't want to miss, right? It's a quick and easy recipe that stars Chef Clem. It's going to inspire your Eid celebration treats for sure. Thanks, JP. Oh. Oh, you are not ready for this. We're talking about ginger, caramel biscuits, Oh, I don't even know where to begin. It's white chocolate, we've got dates, we've got all the things that you love. And of course, we've got one more thing that you love. We've got Chef Clem in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, you deserve, you deserve more, actually. You deserve more. I I, I'm just grateful for, for that. Wow. Okay. Hey, <laughs> thank how, you. That's how we feel when you're in the kitchen, Clem, because we know it's going to be nothing but the good stuff. <laughs> Look, I'm very excited because Winter's coming. Yeah. And that yeah. means we're going to be cooking the most amazing, hearty, delicious foods. We're going to keep it all healthy. Because Ral's in the kitchen. I'm just saying so because Ral's in the kitchen. <laughs> but we, we will, we will. But winter is officially like food season. It is, eh? And I'm going to embrace it now with Claire coming up with a beautiful little ginger biscuit. Because ginger biscuits, you know, the ginger, they're all warming, perfect for winter. Yes. But coming with you with a date caramel, there's my little something healthy. I see what you did there. So this is a great alternative to sweetness. And it, it actually, I almost want to say it tastes better than a traditional caramel. This I, is something so like more... I agree with you, man. Oh, it's, it's like delicious. Some, it, it, it's not too overpowering. It's a perfect balance of sweetness. The texture in it as well leaves you going back for more and more. And, and more. more. Okay, so also perfect for Eid. I love these. I love, love, love these biscuits. What I love the most is the fact that the ginger biscuit itself comes from the ginger biscuit kit. So oh, it's very simple. Oh, so yes, you get I love these kits. So I don't have to worry about anything. No. Right? No, yes. but you take the credit for it. Yes. That's what it's about. I just need to get a fancy tray that looks like mine, and then the rest is history, eh? We, we'll find, we, we can take that board home, take that I'm plate home. I'm taking dibs. You can just take it from the studio. It's fine. No one will, no one will notice. Um, OK, so what I'm going to ask you to do is work on the date caramel. OK. So I've got the beautiful dates there for yeah. you. They've been stoned already. They, so the stones will be taken out, because you do not you want to get those in your you, blender. Have you ever bitten into one? <gasps> wow. Dentist too, Papa. You're done. Ticket. You're done. Ticket. You're done. Okay. Yeah. So those are out there. If you can add those to the blender for me, maybe just, just half of it. Okay. And then you can add a little bit of water to it. And you can All kind right. of regulate how much water you add. To the beginning, I'd say just add like uh, half of that. Not, yeah. Sometimes the dates can be a little drier. Also, if you keep dates for quite a long time, they lose a little bit more, more moisture. That. They almost go like a little bit powdery. That's perfect. They That's go a little what, say? Almost like a little weird texture that changes the drier they oh. get. I've, I've, I've seen that. Yeah, and they sort of almost crystallize. Yes, 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 um, yes. yes. So that, that's, that's my weird thing. I like um, chips when they're stale, and I like dates when they start to crystallize. It's, it reminds me of like confit. Have you ever had it does, it does, it does, it does. Eh? Yes. Clem, okay. before I uh, pop this in the bullet, talk is that to me. Good? So I've got water and dates. Is that it? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to like, be a little fancy, you can add a bit of salt. Oh, lucky. I'm so curious to see what this is going to end up looking yeah. like. So what you can do is you can actually, because that's quite thin, you can add a little more dates to it and thicken it up a little more. Okay. While you're doing that, I've got some butter in here and it's already been softened. I'm going to add, because everything's already in the kit as we spoke about, so I'm going to add my muscovado sugar, and I like that because muscovado sugar just gives it a little more of like a deeper sugar, like a caramel taste. That's that like dark black looking. Oh, that if is, I was yeah, the I sugar, that. I'd be that sugar. I'd be that sugar. Would, uh, look I'd how, be that sugar. Look how good you look. <laughs> you know, you know? Okay, so that's going so, in. Tim, this looks so good. It yeah? smells so good, but you want me to add more dates to this? Add more dates and make it a little thicker. So yeah. let me show you what the end result is when you get the perfect consistency. It kind of looks like that. Oh, that's it. Like a, like a nice jam. Nice jam. And oh. it's delicious. It's amazing. I love it so much. Okay, so. I mean, that's smeared on like hot pancakes because that heat of the, of the hot pancakes kind of like kind of thins it out and softens it a little more. Okay. So it's, it's just delicious. Okay. Right. Another thing about muscovado sugar is very sticky. 
So get that in there, mix it in. Oh, looking at it now, it looks like, like ants. It's so weird. So, okay, no, I, I agree. <laughs> this was weird. If you have like quite a bit of muscovado sugar and you put it down in a bowl, you see it kind of starts moving by itself. Yes, yes, yeah. that's right, yeah. Like ants. Yeah, exactly. Pretty cool, I love it. We, we, we're going back to nature here. <laughs> so I'm thickening up this sauce right now, Kim, trying to re recreate this jam-looking puree that you've got. You're just throwing all these into a bowl and it's coming straight from that box. Right? That's it, that's all I'm doing. So you're good, you're good. We've okay. got the one that's done, like I said. And because there's a bit of sugar in there, it actually lasts a long time because we know sugar's a preservative. Natural preservative, yeah. So egg, get that mixed in there. Then... What is that? This is the actual flour mix. It's got the beautiful ginger in there, which adds that ginger flavor. You can, okay. You can even smell it through... Okay, careful, because I'm almost up. I'm about to sneeze. Oh, well, there's a, that's proper. Yeah. Oh, no, and there's also, definitely ginger in that. If someone says, I'm going to make a ginger biscuit, and I taste it, and I'm like, where's the ginger? Where's the ginger? Don't yeah. play games. <laughs> don't play games. I want to taste the ginger. I don't want to burn. Maybe a little bit of a burn. I I do, you, are, out of everybody, love the burn. I don't think there's... I'm surprised you aren't even putting a chili into this, because you throw chilies into it. Add everything. a chili to it. Add <laughs> a chili to it. Why not? Chili, ginger, biscuits. That, that could work, actually. Absolutely. Chili in chocolate. But they say that... Chili and that heat is quite addictive, and I totally get it. Because I mean, I add hot sauce to my hot sauce, and like, <laughs> you've got to like really, really like. I, I just love food that fights back. If food makes you like, <clears throat> or makes you like tear, or makes you cry, <laughs> you know, when we need ginger beer. Yes. Also, if you don't get that, <clears throat> the bubbles just come yeah. out your nose and your. <laughs> okay, it I needs see. to. It needs to. Okay, so All what right. you can do is get. As soon as it comes together a little bit, you can get your hands in there, mix it together. All right. And, and to add a little bit of extra dimension, we can add a bit of coconut to the top. Okay, I love and it. What they, so simple, you roll it into balls. I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit. I'm not done mixing, but just so I can give you an idea of what, what you're looking for. Do, 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 like that. Cookie dough also. Zoe Brown loves eating raw cookie dough. Do you know this about her? Yeah, I do. My girlfriend does the same thing. It's the worst thing ever. I literally have to hide when we make cookies <laughs> on the show, hide the bowl from it. And she's like, she's like, I smell cookie dough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the cookie monster. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you get I it down. That. You get it down on your, on your board. You can use the back of a spoon. You okay. can just flatten it slightly. Okay. And then it's going to space out a little bit. So give them some room when you place them down. A little bit of coconut goes on. And then they go into the oven super quick and they come out looking so like they, they this. they flatten out like that as well? Yeah, they do. They kind of space out. So what you want to do is when you put them on the board, give them a socially distance your biscuits <laughs> so they can have room to grow a bit. So I mean, you can flour my hands. It's fine. We're baking. Get that beautiful caramel on there. Ooh, ooh. Mm, that looks good. Wow. This is oh, no, look at me. I wasn't generous enough with the, with the <laughs> filling. <laughs> While Clem's doing this, guys, you can head over to Woolworths.co.za for recipe inspiration. It's perfect for after the fast. You guys are going to love tucking into this. I know I definitely am too. And of <sighs> course, it comes in a kit that's as simple as what we've just done right now that Chef Clem has shown us. It's easy as that. It's done. So if you don't have a date, period, Try this one. Date caramel is absolutely amazing. Maybe Tabiso can have it. Tabiso, you'll finally have a date. <laughs> we got you. Got you coming. Well, if you don't have a date, then you go on right here. Check out this recipe inspiration. It's woolworths.co.za for all the steps to making this magic and, of course, filling that belly up after the fall. Only joking, Tabsy. Only joking. <laughs>
It's my feel good breakfast show. <laughs> Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show Express here on S3, and we've got something special for you. Now, this man had a date a little earlier with a couple of ginger biscuits, but there's something new coming up, and that is a choir coming up later and a chance to check out the news with Tabiso Maku <laughs> Bella. <laughs> Taviso Makubela reporting for the news just after 8 o'clock here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We start off with our national headlines. The city of Twani says it plans to convert all households from postpaid to prepaid electricity within the next three years. This is a result of defaulting and slow paying customers impacting revenue collection. The city's finances are dire as a result of defaulting customers and Mayor Randall Williams says the city is embarking on a revenue collection drive and is prioritizing the conversion of prepaid electricity out of some 700,000 households, about 170,000 are yet to be converted to prepaid meters. Meanwhile, staying here in South Africa in the Western Cape, medical teams at the Red Cross War Memorial Children's Hospital in Cape Town have once again proved that they are among the best in the world. They have successfully performed a delicate surgical procedure which separated Siposetu and Amathe Kialisi four days after birth. The twin girls born in the Eastern Cape in February were fused at the head. Professor Tony Figaji, head of the pediatric neurosur neurosurgery at Red Cross, said the twins' condition was the rarest form of conjoint twinning, occurring approximately once in every 2.5 million live births worldwide. In international news, the head of the Suez Canal uh, Authority has said that the, there are plans afoot to expand and deepen the stretch of the canal where the container ship ever given became uh, stuck for six days in March. Osama Rabi spoke at an event also attended by the Egyptian President Abdul Abdul Fattah al-Sisi, the blockage of the Suez Canal, uh, caused enormous disruptions to global trading networks. The Ever Given is still being held as the Suez Canal Authority seeks hundreds of millions of dollars in compensation from its owner. A 13-story residential block in the Gaza Strip collapsed last night after an Israeli airstrike. Israel had dispatched some 80 jet aircraft to bomb Gaza yesterday. In retaliation, Palestinian militants for the second day running fired 130 missiles at Tel Aviv deepening a conflict in which at least 28 people, now sitting at about 31 in the Palestinian enclave, uh, have now died. Of course, uh, meanwhile, in South Africa, several pickets and demonstrations were held across the country yesterday, condemning Israel's attack on Palestinians living in the Gaza Strip. And next, world record bettered on Table Mountain. Former running rivals who became teammates, Christian Grayling and AJ Kalitz, have beaten the Guinness World Records for the longest vertical distance on foot in just under 20 hours on Table Mountain's platter clip, George. Grayling from Stellenbosch and Kalitz from Milk Boss, both trail running legends in South Africa, they bettered the record in a bid to raise awareness for Edunova, an NPO focused on effective use of technology and disadvantaged schools throughout South Africa. In the process, they also broke a few Irish hearts as the previous record held by a team on a mountain in Ireland with a distance of 18,086 meters, equivalent to 13 ascents and descents. Now, the Irish record holders had full 24 hours to complete their laps, but Grayling and Kalitz, uh, they had set the record in less than 20 hours due to the time restrictions of South Africa's curfew. Now, the duo completed a distance of 19,398 meters, equivalent to 14 ascents and descents and a record-breaking time of 19 hours, 52 minutes and 10 seconds. How's that? They started their world record attempt at 4 a.m. on Monday morning and they finished shortly before midnight, just in time for the curfew. Congratulations. Well done for that. That's where we leave it for this morning. Here's Graham. Thank you so much, Tobiso. We are dominated by footballing headlines this morning, and understandably so, as we join the final run into the Premier Soccer League. Of course, the action continued yesterday with Baraka FC recording a 1-0 win over Amazulu FC at the Kings Velatini Stadium. Despite the loss, Sasuta remains second on the PSL log behind leaders Mamelodi Sundowns, but it does dent their chances of chasing them down. In other results, Stellenbosch FC and Orlando Pirates played out to a goalless draw at the Donny Craven Stadium. The Buccaneers missing the opportunity 
opportunity to go third on the log, staying in fourth place after yet another draw this season. Then not so for Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. They didn't even have to play a match, but they were crowned English Premier League champions. Now for the third time in four seasons. That was after Leicester City recorded a 2-1 win over Manchester United at Old Trafford last night. So City are now 10 points ahead of second place United, an unassailable lead with just three league games remaining. This is their second trophy in a little over two weeks, in fact, after they edged out Tottenham Hotspur 1-0 to claim the Carabao Cup. And of course, they still have the UEFA Champions League final up against Chelsea to look forward to before the end of the month. Then at the opposite end of the English Premier League table, Scott Parker's Fulham have been relegated. It's official. That's after their 2-0 loss to Burnley on Monday night. The defeat left them in 18th spot with 27 points on the table. So Fulham dropping down to the English Football League Championship along with West Bromwich Albion and Sheffield United who are also both relegated. That's a wrap of your sport for this Wednesday morning. Let's get one more look at some of your beautiful sunrise pictures. Thank you very much to all of our talented viewers that continue to share their beautiful sunrise pictures with us. We love them. It really does start our day off on the right note. And this morning, we started off with Angie Blackbird from Gabecha, who shared this gorgeous, glowing image of the orange and red sun rising over the ocean. Take a look at that. Eat it. It's beautiful. And then we got one from Bhavana Singh from Muscle Bay, who shared this beautiful image of the sun rising over the ocean. I love it. At 7 o'clock this morning, we got Gary Oakham from the Eastern, uh, rather East London. Yes, we shared this fantastic image. Look at that. Uh, this is where he was able to capture the sun rising in the distance while the moon was still visible. It's magic. What a lovely way to start the day. I love it. But last but not least, Kombisile Lamini from Durban shared this gorgeous view of the sun rising over the ocean. Ah, an experience. Love it. Please do continue to share your sunrise photos with us on the Expresso Facebook page. That's Expresso Morning Show SABC3. We really do love seeing those parts of the country we don't get to see every morning. So don't forget to share your location with us so that we can also give you a shout out, but also give you a brief forecast for the day too. And while we enjoy experiencing a sunrise from your part of South Africa, we do also have some international viewers who tune in both on YouTube and the Africa channel in the USA. And to wrap up up our weather for the day. We are reporting on Albany out in New York. Uh, it's the capital of the U.S. state of New York and it's located on the west bank of the Hudson River, experiencing four distinct seasons every year. And a random fun fact about the city is that uh, the first celebration of the Feast of St. Nicholas, a.k.a. Santa Claus, uh, probably originated in Albany, yes. And the first mention of Santa Claus anywhere in America is in the State Education Department collection of historic manuscripts. And if you are today, finding yourself in Albany, well, you can expect times of sun and clouds reaching a maximum of 17 degrees Celsius. Now, the level of Nelson Mandela Bay's main supply dams has dropped by 0.1%. Not the best news this morning. Uh, this has happened this week to 12.44% of total combined capacity. This is despite last week's good rains in the main catchment area of the Langkluf. But it has brought the metro another week until, uh, you know, critical 10% levels is uh, reached where the extraction from the dams becomes extremely, extremely difficult. Such a difficult time over there. It's estimated that parts of the metro will still, you know, start running out of uh, uh, water by the, uh, July uh, unless the region has more rain. So we hope for rain that side. The Kuga Dam is now at 4.25% and uh, second largest dam, the Impofu, is just over 15%. Nelson Mandela Bay uh, daily receives some say about 170 million liters uh, of water from the Orange River, which is treated at Neutgedracht, uh, which means uh, taps won't ride dry. Uh, but getting water to homes, businesses and industries will become more difficult. With a third of the month having passed, the 42 millimeter received thus far is well below the average of 58 millimeter for May. So please, let's look after the water uh, resources over there and hope for rain as well. Let's take a look at those temperatures across the country. A final look starting off in Bulugwani, sunny day today. Eight is your low, reaching a high of 26. And if you're out in Mbombela, sunny times for you as well. You start off at 12 degrees, reaching a high of 31. Pretoria, Tswani, nine, reaching a high of 27, with uh, nine and 24 temperatures for Johannesburg. If you're out in Mahikeng, seven is your low, reaching a high of 26, with Klexdorp as, uh, starting off at a low of six, peaking a high of 27 degrees. Kimberley, eight and 26, with sunny times for Bloemfontein today, two, reaching a high 
of 25. Richards Bay, 18. That's your low, reaching highs of 29. If you're out in Peter Maritzburg, 11 and 30. South Africa's playground, 40% chance of rain. Durban, 17, reaching a high of 27. With 1% of uh, rain, uh, out in Mtata, 7, reaching a high of 28. Sun and clouds for East London, 12 and 22. With Craddock starting off at 6 and peaking at 28. Trebecha, 11 and 20. With George at 10, reaching a high of 20. If you're out in the mother city, Cape Town, 10, reaching a high of 19. With Wooster starting off at 8 and reaching a high of 26. In Sutherland, your low is 7, your high is 22. Uppington, last certainly not least, 12. That's where you start off. You will peak at 30 degrees. And that's where we leave it for this morning. No matter what the weather is looking like in your part of the country, it's hump day, Wednesday. Make it a feel-good type of day. Let's get some uh, music and, uh, of course, a bit of a prize beating going on with game day. You may have already seen them on TV or possibly heard them on the radio singing the iconic one-liner, This Could Be Us. To many South Africans who could be living that game price beat life. They are indeed the game price beat promise choir and we have them in studio this morning to perform uh, not one but two songs. Before we get there, we still have Catherine Madley with us, uh, the Vice President of Marketing for Game. And I just wanted to find out a bit more about why this choir is here, why a choir for game? A choir is my most favourite thing in the world, and this <laughs> is the Game Price Beat Choir. It's the soul of game, and I'm so excited to have them sing for everybody this Aww. morning. This is the soul of game, the Price Beat Choir. Yes, it is indeed. Without any further ado, trust me, this Price Beat promise is something to sing about. So much so, we'll prove it. This is the Price Beat Choir. is tight I cannot breathe you're still in my mind and my heart some days are reminisce of moments we've shared but those days when you covered us up when we had no food to eat or clothes to wear I always try to imagine how it would be if you were around now when then i still see you in my dreams i just hear the sound that screams my mind said i miss you mama you're still in my heart you mama I miss your loving and your care said I miss you mom Ooh, yeah 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 oh, oh. Mama. Mama. Yeah. I still can recall how your voice sounded and every word you said We still laugh with my brother and sisters Thinking of how you loved us, yeah How you build us to be strong Wise so that we can handle all that the world brings It's like you're here in the midst of a song oh, how i miss you mama yeah, yeah. mama said i miss you mama you're still in my heart in my mind every day Ooh. said i miss you mama Surely no, yeah, yeah. But 
your spirit and your love lies inside of me. Mama, mama, yeah, yeah. Said I know, I know, mama. I know you won't come back anymore, yeah. But your love and your spirit lies inside of me. Inside of me, sing, Mama. Said I miss you. Said I miss you, Mama. I miss your loving and your care. I miss your 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 courageous spirit. You're my Mama, yeah, and you'll always be. No one can ever take your place in my heart. My mama, said I miss you, I miss you. Said I miss you, mama. I miss you. I miss you. Take me to game. So if you thought that was a powerhouse performance, trust me, there's so much more coming from this incredible game price beat promise choir a little bit later on the show. And they'll be giving you some vocals that you are gonna just, you're gonna feel from the soul. And it's gonna take you straight to game. So stay right there, right here with Expresso. Lauren gonna call in. Is Lauren phoning us physically? Indulge your desires. Be swept away by the fragrance of descent. Take the plunge into impulsive spending until you find yourself deeper and deeper drowning in debt. In this world of temptation, do you want a bank that takes your money? Or a bank that takes your money seriously? It's my feel-good work this show. Ah, welcome back, you beautiful souls. It's the middle of the week. We are live right here and opening up on S3 with Expresso. Now, welcome back to another installment of that culinary hotline bling, ching, ching, ching. Yes, 
Yes, I love this time of the day. <laughs> now, if you have any questions for Chef Clem and all things in the kitchen or need help getting out of those sticky foodie situations, then you can pick up the phone and call us right now. It's 021-110-5552 and we'll come at you with everything when you need that help in the kitchen now. There's some exciting things ahead. Yes. It's almost time. It is almost year. And if you still have not prepared anything or know what you will be making, then don't worry. Because of course, Chef Clem's in the building. He's here to give you all the help and ideas that you need. And of course, it is around the corner. So we're going to be celebrating yes. you know, a month of wholesomeness, a month of love, a month of care, awareness. And now it's the perfect time to celebrate it all. Clem. I love that culture celebrate yeah. at the, either the beginning or the end or the middle. The celebration always is around by food. I love that. I love Food, that. family, love. What could be better? And I've actually got a question in here that we were asked, which I think is going to be absolutely perfect. I don't know if she's on the line, but her name is Lauren Bloemfontein, all right? And I think we might actually... Oh, oh it looks like there? Lauren's phone back. All right. I hope it's Lauren, actually. Let me just find out. Who? Culinary Hotline Bling. Hello, how can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, is this Lauren? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Lauren. Sorry, my phone oh, just okay, kind of broke okay. as I picked it up. I was so excited to chat to you. Welcome to the show. You are live. We can hear you. What is your question for Chef Clem? Um, ah, okay. All right. Testing okay. my Afrikaans today, so it looks but like I like it. Know how you brown a leg of lamb. So the easiest way to brown your leg of lamb is to get a, a big pot or a big pan on the stove, get a little bit of oil in there, and then you add your meat to it. Like we're using a free range leg of lamb today from Willie's. It's easy to cook one. It's really been marinating in some spice, in, like rosemary, yes, olive oil, all the stuff. goodness in there. Mm. But then I thought about it. If you're preparing a leg of lamb, chances are you're cooking a feast, right? So your stove's gonna be busy. The, the, fried potatoes are going, the green beans are going, everything's going, so your stovetop's gonna be quite busy. How do I save space, but still get that beautiful brown crust on the leg of lamb? Mm. And I've got it. This one not yeah. only gives you a beautiful crust, it also gives you amazing flavor. So Lauren, this one is for you. So like I said, we're gonna use our free range leg of lamb, which is also one of the most popular, when we ask people like, what are you preparing for your, your Ramadan table this year? And they yeah. said, leg of lamb. Ooh. So I was like, okay, cool, let's actually do this. So. And what a meal that is. And this one's been vacuum packed, so all the flavors that are in there, like I said, like the, the rosemary and all the extra herbs in there. So when you vacuum pack it, it actually helps intensify the flavor. And while, so while it's it was, marinating in all of that. Yes, it is. Aging to perfection, so by the time you put it out and get it ready, all the, all the hard work's kind of almost been done. It's been done for you, exactly. So here's my little trick. Okay, we're gonna use a beautiful spice mix. This is a uh, kadai, kadai paste. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is delicious. It's All too right. could die for. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit of call wasty there. I had to. <laughs> yes, you yes. Need too much time with call eh? <laughs> Love that guy. Love that guy. Okay, cool. So. Get your kadai curry paste into the bowl. All the spices are in there, the oil's in there, and very important, you need, people are very scared of fat, especially when they're working with like curry. They go, oh, it's, it's got a bit of a fat sitting on the top of yeah, the curry, I don't like it. Yeah, it separates, yeah. What I mean, they don't yeah. understand is the fat is important because fat carries flavor. Mm. So it carries the flavors of the spices. That's why when I actually fry garlic, and before I start cooking a dish, I always add my garlic to my oil while the oil's cold then heat it up, because then the oil really gets infused with all that garlic oh, flavor. As opposed to just like, opposed to just charring it. Exactly, it exactly. All right, so, I got you. Next thing is beautiful, and we're using the double cream yogurt, and it's plain. Don't use strawberry. I feel like I said that I have to say strawberry that. flavored but someone, lamb, <laughs> imagine that. We've literally had someone say, um, so I'm using, I'm making a yogurt base, whatever, but it's for a savory dish, can I use the grenadella, whatever. Grenadella actually not the bad one. But then they were like, and strawberry, this is what I got. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, look, maybe you can't, you not. Probably could you use you it, could. I, mean, I don't know what it's gonna actually taste like. And, uh, Absolutely. Okay, so, what we're gonna do is mix in that kadai curry paste into the yogurt, and now we're gonna start basting. 
So you use the nice full cream rogage. I love the fact that it's also bifido bacterium cultures are rife in this thing. So a little bit of health coming through as well. Exactly. Good gut health, especially Good gut during health. the fast. This yes. is really important for you too. So, so nice little additive there. There we go. That's the lamp. So like I said, you could normally just brown this in the pan, get that color on there. But what happens is when this goes into the oven, that beautiful yogurt and the curry paste form a crust on it. Okay. And it is so good. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna add this to, I'm gonna just gonna save a step here. I'm gonna add this to the beautiful paste first, get that on there. Get it well crusted. Get it like a nice bit of the yogurt on there. You say well crusted. Are you literally implying that this is going to turn into like a hard crust? No, 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 not a hard crust, but it's going to give you a nice char on the outside. Okay, okay. And the I'm thing about sure. yogurt, when it gets exposed to like the high heat of the oven, it almost goes a bit smoky as if it's been on the braai. Oh, I like that. So, half an hour like this. And still got a bit of the marinade yeah. left over. Yeah. Half an hour like this in the oven. 180, perfectly fine. And then turn it over baste it again in another half an hour. You're gonna get a beautiful brown as if you've seared it in the pan oh, okay. or as if it's been on the braai. Garlic naan, because there's never a wrong time to have naan. So garlic naan, jalapenos, get a little bit more extra yogurt on that, break it off, put in a little parcel in your mouth. The lamb's gonna be so amazing. Besides the flavor and the crust, you're gonna get it also helps tenderize the meat even more. You're gonna get so much flavor. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be perfectly browned every single time. Wow, I think uh, Lauren is just sitting there. Her jaws probably dropped right now. I hope that answers your question when it comes to browning your lamb. And that's an alternative way to doing it as opposed to just kind of like charring it on the pan yeah. and then baking it and letting it sink in, I would imagine. Absolutely, but I just literally thought about whenever we are cooking leg of lamb, always there's an occasion for it and the kitchen is so busy. So if I can save you one burner and just use your oven, it's a win. All right, I love yeah. that. Lauren, are you still with us? What do you think of that one? Is she still on the line? Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. I am. It looks delicious. I'm oh. gonna do it. Thank you, Lauren. This is me doing a celebration. Oh, we wow. just served oh, wow. another yes. customer yes. with some good yes. advice. Nice, nice, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but yogurt is a great one. Yogurt is something I keep in the fridge for a long time, and it does last long in the fridge as well because of those active cultures that are in there. I almost feel like it gets thicker, gets more tastier. Yogurt is so essential, especially for winter cooking, marinating things, fried chicken. If you don't have buttermilk, use yogurt. You get that serious crust on it again. That's what it gives you. It just tenderizes meat so much, and it, because it goes savory, sweet, snack, yogurt. Oh, yogurt, I yogurt, so yogurt. I think I've got to do a little disclaimer for Bloemfontein. You guys out there, if you smell something good cooking and you're wondering what it is, it's probably Lauren hooking up a leg of lamb right now. So if you've got any other culinary conundrums or want to share your kitchen fails, you can call us right now on 21 110 And if you missed this recipe and just tuned in, shame on you. But you can find this online, of course, at expressoshow.com. We've got all the recipe inspiration that you need. And we've got some culinary hotline bring coming right at you after this. See you soon. <laughs>For days, Ryle has been trying to get out of the wrong side of this bed. How's it going, Matt? Absolutely terrible, G. Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Bro. No, honestly, man, there is no wrong side to this bed. Yep, that's because it's a rest assured Ruby Queen base set. And if you keep your eyes on the Espresso Show and our digital pages... Answer an easy question. And from the 10th to the 14th of May, you stand a chance to win one of five of these incredible rest assured beds valued at 8,000 rand. Nice. Maybe it's that side. Let's we'll find out. Side. Maybe Let's find it's out. Side. No. <laughs> <laughs>
Madeline Bridges once said, then give to the world the best you have and the best will come back to you. Now, nurses do more than care for individuals. They have always been at the forefront of change in healthcare and public health, even more so over the past two years during the COVID-19 sure. pandemic. And joining us this morning as a tribute to all the nurses on this International Nurses Day is Head of First for Women Insurance, Sunet van Weingart. A very good morning to you, Sunet. Good morning, and nice to be with you this morning. Um, you, you seem very excited to be joining <laughs> us, which is, is awesome for us, because I think we are incredibly excited as well. This is a vitally important day that has, I think, been underpinned by what our frontline workers, especially nurses, have been through over the last year. And First for Women have launched this tribute to all of our nurses in one really heartwarming video. We're going to take a quick look at that to just set the tone. Never believe that a few caring people can't change the world. They brave the dark and hold the courage to face the unknown. The city has been especially hard hit by the virus. Citizens have been urged to remain at home. They risk their lives for mine and yours burdened with the worry of their own family while taking care of others. They are there to welcome the first breath of a newborn and comfort those who are taking their last. They feel their pain and witness their struggles. They cry with them. <laughs> Laugh with them and hold their hand through it all. They've seen humanity at its worst and continue to roll with the punches. They are the fearless first. Despite it all, while we are sleeping, they stay with them by their side, doing what they need to do to heal the injured, help the sick, and nurse them back to health. And while we may not remember their names, we will never forget how they make us feel. Never think that a few caring people can't change the world. Because those nurses who believe that care is the real cure usually do. We can't help but smile, oh. but even tear up a little bit just watching that video. Oh, Sinead, I, I hope you feel the same yeah. wave of emotion. I know you've probably know. watched that a, a few times before. I, I had a baby during lockdown, so this just hit on a number of levels for me. But it just really does make us, I think, take on board, understand what it means to work on the front line. We say it all the time. But that is the reality of what our nurses have had to go through. I can, I can feel a million different motivations, but from First for Women's perspective, why was it important for you to produce this beautiful tribute? And it is beautiful. Thank you, Graham. And you're right. It, it's difficult not to get emotional watching that. Um, so, so First for Women decided, you know, every year on the 12th of May, which is Florence Nightingale's birthday, the world celebrates its nurses for giving hope and help to those in need. And I think we can all agree this year our nurses deserve even more recognition for the role that they've played in fearlessly fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's exactly why we decided to produce this moving tribute to thank our unsung heroes, our nurses, for their courageous service that they provided to us um, during this pandemic. And what a beautiful way to pay tribute to them. I also want you to tell us a bit more about your Nurse at First product. What sort of benefits are offered with this product? So Nurse at First is a 24-7 medical um, advice hotline. So if any of our policyholders or their children um, have an ache or a pain or need for medical advice and they're not sure what to do, they can call the Nurse at First for advice. It's obviously free of charge in terms of the advice given, and our customers can phone as often and as frequently as they want or need advice. 
And I'm sure people have been calling over the last year and a half. Uh, maybe Unbelievably. Uh, I, I can imagine that this is, we need it because we've had to deal with the craziest situation that none of us could have expected, but we're seeing our resilience, we're seeing our strength, and we are seeing and hopefully feeling the pride around our frontline workers. So I'm gonna ask you to add to this beautiful tribute and, and ask you what message do you have for all nurses out there watching right now on International Nurses Day? So my message to all our nurses watching is a heartfelt thank you. Thank you for putting your health or the health of others first, for being courageous and strong and for leading with grace and passion during the challenges you personally had to face. Thank you might not be enough, but at this stage, this is what we want to say to you. Thank you. Uh, and Sunette, maybe we want to say thank you to you and also for the team for allowing this to happen for our nurses, because again, thank you is not enough, but we say thank you as well. Absolutely. And of course, today with First for Women, we celebrate International Nurses Day, but also take the time to acknowledge, appreciate and celebrate our forefront healthcare workers today and every single other day of this year. Ah, we love Power. it. We love it. Powerhouse. Yes. Thank you very much, Nurse Sunet, as we celebrate and commemorate hashtag International Nurses Day. Love it. Indeed. Of course, you've been jumping onto social media telling me exactly what healthcare worker has affected you and why in the best way possible. And you've answered so beautifully. In fact, we've got a few of them that have popped up. And yeah. I want to start off with uh, Yanni Herbst saying, mm. Sister uh, Grimbeek at the Hill Street Clinic, Kroenstadt, who made the first call to help my daughter get her tonsil operation. Everybody else told us it was not that serious, but Sister uh, Grimbeek, uh, excuse me, I uh, gave her one look and ran to the phone call to call the hospital. And of course, the sister, if it wasn't for you, my child would have still been sick today, struggling with the tonsils from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you. So if it's Grimbeek or Grimbeek, it's up Grimbeek. to you. I think it's, I was from probably, here we go, I, I thought so. I love that, I love that, that's a beautiful message. It is always the nurses, and yes. we, we, we sometimes forget this, it's always, the, the nurse is always the first person that you see when you go into triage at the hospital. Indeed. Then you see the doctor, and then afterwards as well. And then we got a picture from Gary, I mean, Gary, you're a fave, but Gary Ocum sent us a picture, I mean, take a look at this picture. Yeah. Let's have that picture on uh, from Gary Ocum. Uh, it's gonna come on just now, but it's basically a picture of a whole bunch of nurses at the corridor there with all the superheroes around. Yes. I love that. Because they actually are like, Indeed they're the same they people, basically. They belong to the same community. Superheroes, nurses, same people. Exactly, and I mean, thank you so much for all that you do. And I mean, if you are indeed a nurse today or any healthcare worker, we want to salute you and thank you for all that you do. You, you get us over lines that we never knew uh, that we could actually cross. And it's uh, for your motivation, your hard work, and the fact that you stay away from your families so we can see ours healthy, that is powerful. So thank you. Calling all South Africans to the front line. It's time to rally together to celebrate our bold pharmacy heroes who have put our safety on the top of their priority lists in 2020 and 2021. Join Adcock Ingram OTC's new season of Sponsors of Brave in showing our gratitude and thanking our pharmacy frontline heroes by nominating your local pharmacist, pharmacy assistant, or pharmacy who have gone the extra mile for all their customers. Nominate your local small pharmacy, retail pharmacy, or pharmacist who have shown what it means to be a frontline hero. By nominating your colleague, pharmacist, or yourself, you could stand a chance to win one of eight 5,000 Rand cash prizes. Two of these featured nominees will win an exciting opportunity to pursue a passion project of their choice. One chosen by the votes, and one chosen by the Atcock Ingram OTC's Sponsors of Brave panel of judges. A passion project is the opportunity to give back to the community to the value of 25,000 Rand. Show some gratitude today with Atcock Ingram OTC's Sponsors of Brave.
See life through the cutting edge designs of metal windows. Every steel or aluminum window and door is custom made using their Foreman brand systems designed by and exclusive to metal windows. In any space, residential, retail, commercial or hospitality, they provide custom solutions to fit the needs of you, their client. Get inspired with their portfolio on metalwindows.co.za, Facebook and on Instagram. It's my feel good Ah, welcome back, you beautiful souls. We are live right here, opening up on S3 and it's Espresso, where we got all the good stuff for you, right? So the culinary hotline bling is still here, of course, and we are joined by Chef Clem on our foodie panel to help you out with any of your culinary conundrums. And if you have any questions for Chef Clem on all things in the kitchen, then of course you can call us right now on 021-110-5552. The line is... Wow, oh, quick. people do not waste time, Clem. Oh, okay, let me not break the phone this time. <laughs> <laughs> Culinary hotline bling, how may I help you? This is Ryle speaking. Hello. Hi there, how are you doing? Who can I ask I'm this calling? I'm calling you. Fantastic, who's on the line? Am I speaking to uh, Chef Clem? Uh, this is Chef Clem's secretary at the moment. Uh, shall I put you through? Uh, what is your, yes, what is your question for him? Well, uh, well, firstly, I would like to say, uh, Oh my greatness, oh my greatness, I'm speaking to the famous chef, Clem, oh, oh my god. No, no. I'm oh, so honored no, to be no, with no, this. No, no. Yes, you are correct, it I'm is honored. him. Thank you, I'm happy to be talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. Um, <laughs> Sean, it's Sean, right? Sean, you're like the best caller ever, man. I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, uh, I'm not... I'm not such a good cook. You and me both? All right. I would like to know why doesn't my chicken come the way it's supposed to? <laughs> what, what dish are you, are you making with your chicken? I'm just frying the chicken. I'm just... just chicken. Fried chicken? I'm just eating chicken. Yeah, I got I'm a single you. guy. I got you this chicken. one. Fried chicken so I is put a... It in the oil. Yeah, I, I, I put it in the oil. And... Yes. And, and it just ends there. A little water. I can help you. I Sean, can help Sean, you. Sean, you don't have to actually worry. I think Chef Clem will give it to you straight. Yeah. All you got to do is do exactly what he says right now, and you will be the chicken a la king of wow. the world. Wow. Are you serious? Oh, wasty. Wow, well, come on, waste on me. He's <laughs> like a lotion. You just rub it on, and it's just... <laughs> So, Sean, first of all, thank you so much for your kind um, words. I appreciate it so much. Fried chicken is one of the most satisfying dishes you can have. It's almost like a, almost, uh, eating fried chicken is like a religious experience because it's just so like, it's just so satisfactory to all your senses. And when you get it right, it is heavenly. Well, so here's what you, you need to do first of all. Can I get an amen? Amen, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it starts off with, uh, whenever I do fried chicken, I always marinate my chicken. I season it with a little bit of, barbecue spice, chicken spice, whatever spice you want to do, that, that's not the most important part. The most important thing is then I add buttermilk or I make my own buttermilk, which is a little bit of milk, a little bit of lemon juice. I let it sit there until it starts to curdle. Then I put that over the chicken. What this does is it does two things. It acts as a glue to help the flour stick to it. Mm. And then it also helps tenderize your chicken. So if you're finding that when you're frying your chicken and it comes out of the oil, it's very stringy and dry, this is what buttermilk will prevent. So into a bowl, Get your chicken in there, get your spices on it. Salt and pepper, also very important. So if you think about a piece of chicken, it's quite thick, right? Yeah. Get that salt on there, let it give it a chance to kind of penetrate into the meat, get the flavor in there. Buttermilk goes on. Let it sit in that for about half an hour. If you're gonna overnight, of course, amazing, but not everyone has that time to let the, ch the chicken sit. Also, if the chicken craving hits, it's real. Yeah, what yeah, it yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. So about 15 minutes, half an hour, perfect. Then get your flour and season your flour. Get paprika and the salt, pepper, all of that. It's basically the same stuff we used on your chicken, put it in the flour. Take your chicken out the buttermilk, get it in the flour, make sure you get every single nook and cranny of the chicken coated in that flour. Most important thing, put your chicken to the side. Don't add your chicken to the oil immediately. Uh, give your chicken like 10 minutes just to sit with that flour coating on there. What happens is the moisture of your buttermilk absorbs the, the, moisture, the dryness of the flour, almost forms a biscuit on the outside. Okay. That's where the crispiness comes from. While your chicken's sitting, Preheat your oil, very important. If you put chicken into cold oil, that crumb's gonna just come off, your chicken's gonna boil. You don't want that. So get your oil nice and hot, take a little bit of the flour that you got left over, put it in there, soft to sizzle, you're good. Uh -huh. Then, what I do, no matter how big the pot is, unless you've got that big soup pot, if you've got a standard size kitchen pot, 
fry six pieces of chicken at a time, no more. Not the whole batch. As soon as you do, as soon as you add more chicken to it, you drop the temperature of the oil and it starts boiling in the oil instead of frying. If you get those steps all right, guaranteed you're gonna have the juiciest chicken, steamy, delicious inside, crispy on the outside. I think we should actually pick this one up again because like I said, winter's coming. So we did, it we did it last year. We're gonna do another fried chicken segment soon during this winter period. Just to go over that again. But there is a recipe available on the um, Woolworths website and on the Espresso website. Go and check that recipe out. That's the original one we did last year. It's amazing, it's delicious, I love that. fried chicken. I remember you made it a year ago and it's still sitting in my memory so much. So Sean, I hope you answered your question. Thank you for coming through. Thank that was you, a Sean. brilliant question nonetheless. And I think he's actually just put the phone down and he went straight to the kitchen. I don't blame him, so I don't blame him. Clearly you. there's a reason why everyone's so excited to see and chat to you, Chef Clem. But I've got another question for yes. you while we at it. And uh, we're short on time and I think it's perfect because what if I'm that law scorp that realized, oh, I've got family coming over. It is about to go down. We need to celebrate, but I haven't thought of a meal to prepare. I've got you. Help me, Chef. We're going to do two recipes at one time because you need to know yes. these recipes. Okay. You're going to work on our dessert, which is a delicious strawberry pudding. All it is is jelly, cream, and a bit of yogurt. Okay. I'm going to ask you to combine those. All right. The jelly, the strawberry flavor comes from the jelly, right? Okay. The cream gives you that nice decadence of creaminess, and the, the, straw, the, the yogurt kind of gives you a bit of like a, a twang, okay? And a you twang. want that. Okay. So I've got a biscuit base. Don't worry about the biscuit base. If you can just mix those elements together, so is it's butter. It's butter, which is gonna go with your biscuit base, so don't worry about that okay, for so now. That you are on cream, jelly, and yogurt. Yogurt, all right, yeah. I got that. Okay. What are you up to on that side? That's, that's a something sweet, right? And that's gonna honestly take about two to three hours to sit, and it's a, an absolutely delicious dessert. So you're all on right. that. I've got Nick, you, I've got I'm gonna you. do the savory dish, Hit three it. ingredients. And you need to understand the epicness of this dish is amazing. We're gonna use the Woolies butter chicken curry sauce. This is butter chicken, but it's not only for chicken. I'm telling you, this with other ingredients is absolutely amazing. We made battered cauliflower, and then we like, cooked it in the butter chicken sauce. Oh, yes. It was like battered cauliflower. It was mind blowing. That's so beautiful, and it's in a packet, so you don't have to do much, right? You don't do it, you slip it and you. get it in there. Then, I tried this once, and my mind was blown, okay. Haddock. In South Africa, it's hake, which has been smoked and lightly colored, okay? That smoky flavor that you get from the haddock, that with curry is absolutely, absolutely amazing. So you get your haddock portions out the box. It's been portioned for you already. Best part, you cook it from frozen. From frozen? From frozen. Okay. Okay. So you get your butter curry sauce going. It's going to start bubbling now. So literally, someone's knocked on your door and like, oh my goodness, <laughs> what's going on? You grab the frozen haddock fillets out of the freezer. They've already been apportioned in the bag. Get them into the sauce. By the time that the curries come out the sauce, you've already kind of heated through your haddock. You give it another five minutes and you've made the most delicious buttered haddock? What? Oh, that sounds crazy. It is so yeah. good. I'm so, I'm so blown away at something so simple like taking a butter chicken and not using chicken. Yeah. I know it sounds silly, but it's actually genius because that butter chicken flavor for me, it's so, so good and I can actually picture it going well with any meat whatsoever. Any so, meat or vegetable. A brilliant idea. Absolutely. So like you I guys, said. of course, sorry, while Cliff, Chef Clem's busy at this and you just tuned in, head over to expressoshow.com for all this recipe inspiration. We're getting you prepped for it. It's a beautiful celebration, a month long fast. This is what you want to celebrate. This is what you want. Yeah. Your, your butter haddock's going there. The rice, you're not gonna make the rice. Pop it out of the freezer, pop it in the microwave. The savory rice with this one with the sweet little carrots, broccoli in there. It's so delicious. Raoul's nice. made it your dessert. This beautiful filling goes on a biscuit base, goes into a glass. All you have to do is top it with strawberries, a little bit of flake, like flake chocolate on there. You're done. And it looks good too, it, yeah. it tastes so nostalgic, actually. It's amazing that with your butter haddock curry, it's done. It everyone's is that, is happy. That it? Everyone's gonna be what? so happy. And you're gonna call me, and I'm gonna tell you, I, I told you so. I told you so. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, well, there you have it, guys. The perfect preparation for it. It's a time to celebrate. It's a time to forgive and encourage forgiveness too. And what a perfect pairing to go with it. So you can get this recipe on expressoshow.com. Of course, all the inspiration is there, all the ingredients and all the love that you're going to need for this incredible celebration. So I think there's one more last thing to say and that's it'll fit it to everybody out there. I hope it was a successful fast and nonetheless and I hope that you have nothing but love, memory making and good food to go along with this yeah. celebration. Thank you, Chef Clem. Thank you. Nice stuff, indeed. <laughs> you got, have you got itis? Yes, I got itis. After, after watching the food, I am tired.
I don't know what's happening. It's one of those beautiful no, just things. Chill out, boy. Yes, sir. Just this relax. is very, very delicate. It well, is indeed. Um, you know, and this makes me think of something. They say a, a good mattress will last you up to eight to ten years. Of course, this may vary depending on the quality of your mattress and how you take care of it. It's important. And did you know what are the best ways to keep your mattress looking newer? for longer is to actually vacuum it. Really? Now this will help to get rid of dust and dead skin cells yeah. and dust mites and yeah. I know and other particles. Yeah. Uh, for even better results, you can actually use a mattress protector which is always the, the best go-to. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you have it, two easy and effective tips that I'm sure Liesl Forbes will be trying out. Who and why, you may ask? Well, we are gonna ask for a drum roll first. Is it a, can we do a bed roll? A bed roll. Roll up the blanket. Liesl Forbes is the winner of the incredible yeah. wrestler show and Ruby Queen Bass! Yes! All she had to do was tell us what three things she looks for when choosing a bed and this is what she had to say. Mm -hmm. Support. Good. Comfort. Uh-huh. And size. And size. It's got to be big, man. That's Hashtag right. rest assured. Well... This bed will tick all of those boxes and more. And remember, you also have a chance to win yourself a rest assured Ruby queen size mm -hmm. base set bed with a no turn mattress and an evolution pocket spring system valued at, get this, 8,000 Rand. Yes. Well, all you have to do Woo. is reply to the competition post on Expresso's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram accounts and tell us how you keep your mattress clean. Remember to include hashtag rest assured in your answer to see more of the rest assured products. Follow them on Instagram at restassured.beds. Now that, love. Yes, Angel. And they're back, and it's time to take you to game right here on Expresso. The Feel Good Breakfast Show. Game stores at the moment have a price beat promise choir that are singing their way to guaranteed beautiful prices for you if you go to game. And this morning, their second performance is going to take you away. Get ready to experience their joy. Take it away. This is the game price beat promise choir. This could be us Beating prices and saving price Beat life realness This could be us Happily stretching the budget With the price beat life This could be us Giving retail therapy No rest Because we beat all of the prices This could be us Redefining hey, peer pressure hey. Because price beating is for everyone. This could be us. Looking at price tags without Uvalo. Because you're guaranteed the beat this price. This could be us. You could be taking the trolley for a top up, my brother and my sis. This could be us. And walking out with a smile on your face. Ooh. This could be us. Looking at the price tags, then filling up your shopping bags. Ooh, yeah, yeah. This could be us. Because at game, you're guaranteed, Ooh, guaranteed. to beat the price. Yeah. yeah. This, this could be us. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. It could be you, it could be us, yeah. This could be us. By living the game, price, speed, life. It could be you, it could be me. This could be us. Hey, you're walking now like the price is not so nice. Oh, yeah. This could be us. And are those empty bags are making you sad? This could be us. Because over there, yeah, there's just despair. Oh, yeah, yeah. This could be us. Come join us at the place where you're guaranteed the B to beat the price. This could be us. By living the game, price be life. Ooh, yeah, yeah. This could be Man. Oh, we man. love you. We'll see you tomorrow, six till nine. Mwah. Adios. Go smile. This could be us. Could be us. Here's to family favorites and recipes passed from mothers to daughters, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.